महापरिनिर्वाण सूत्र दस हैव आई हर्ड वंस द ब्लेसेड वन डुवेल्ट इन राजगह ऑन द हिल कॉल्ड फल्चर स्पीक एट दैट टाइम द किंग अफ मगध अजात सत्तु सन अफ द विदेही क्वीन डिजाइड टू वेज वार एगेन्स्ट द बज्जीज ही स्पोक इन दिस फैशन दीज बज्जीज पावरफुल एंड ग्लोरियस एज दे आर आई सेल एनी हिलेट देम आई सेल मेक देम पेरिश आई सेल अटरली डिस्ट्रॉय देम एन अजात सत्तु द किंग अफ मगध एड्रेस्ड हिज चीफ मिनिस्टर द ब्राह्मण बस्सकारा सेइंग कम ब्राह्मण गो टू द ब्लेसेड वन पे होमेज इन माई नेम एट इज फिट वी सीम गुड हेल्थ स्ट्रेंथ इज फेबर भिगर एंड कम्फर्ट एंड स्पीक दस ओ लॉर्ड अजात सत्तु द किंग अफ मगध डिजायर्स टू वेज वार एगेन्स्ट द बज्जीज ही हेज स्पोकन इन दिस फैशन दीज बज्जीज पावरफुल एंड ग्लोरियस एज दे आर आई सेल एन हिलेट देम आई सेल मेक देम पेरिश आई सेल अटरली डिस्ट्रॉय देम एन व्हाट एवर द ब्लेसेड वन शुड एंसर यू कीप इट वेल इन माइंड एंड इनफॉर्म मी फॉर तथागत डू नॉट स्पीक फॉल्सली वेरी वेल सर सेट द ब्राह्मण भस्सकारा इन एसाइन टू अजात सत्तु किंग अफ मगध एंड ही ऑर्डर अ लार्ज नंबर अफ मेग्निफिशियंट क्यारिजेज टू बी मेड रेडी माउंटेड वन हिमसेल्फ एंड एकम्पेनिड बाई द रेस्ट ड्रोव आउट टू राजगह टुवर्ड्स फल्चर स्पीक He went to carriage as far as the carriage could go then dismounting he approached the blessed one on foot after exchanging courteous greetings with the blessed one together with many pleasant words he sat down at one side and addressed the blessed one thus venerable gotama azad sattu the king of magadha pays homage at the feet of the venerable gotama and wishes him good health strength ease vigor and comfort He desires to wage war against the bajjis and he has spoken in this fashion This bajjis powerful and glorious as they are I shall annihilate them I shall make them perish I shall utterly destroy them Conditions of a nation's welfare At that time the venerable Ananda was standing behind the blessed one fanning him and the blessed one addressed the venerable Ananda thus What have you heard Ananda do the bajjis have frequent gatherings and are their meetings well attended I have heard lord that this is so so long Ananda as as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be expected not their decline what have you heard Ananda do the bajjis assemble and disperse peacefully and attend to their affairs in concord I have heard lord they, that they do so long ananda as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be as, as expected not their decline what have you heard ananda do the bajjis neither enact new decrees nor abolish existing ones but proceed in accordance with their ancient constitutions i have heard lord that they do so long ananda as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be expected not their decline what have you heard ananda do the bajjis so respect honor esteem and veneration towards their elders and think it worthwhile to listen to them i have heard lord that they do so long ananda as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be expected not their decline what have you heard ananda do the bajjis refrain from abducting women and made maidens of good families and for from detaining them i have heard lord that they refrain from doing so so long ananda as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be expected not their decline what have you heard ananda do the bajjis so respect honor esteem and veneration towards their shrines both those within the city and those outside it and do not deprive them of the due offerings as given and made to them formerly i have heard lord that they do venerate their shrines and that they do not deprive them of their offerings so long ananda as this is the case the growth of the bajjis is to be expected not their decline 
What have you heard, Ananda? Do the Bajjis duly protect and guard the Arahats, so that those who have not come to the Riyam at might do so, and those who have already come might live there in peace? I have heard, Lord, that they do. So long, Ananda, as this is the case, the growth of the Bajjis is to be expected, not their decline. And the Blessed One addressed the Brahman Vasakara in these words. Once Brahman, I dwelt at Besali at the Sarandada shrine and there it was that I taught the Bajjis the seven conditions leading to a nation's welfare. So long Brahman, as this endure among the Bajjis and the Bajjis are well are known for it, their growth is to be expected, not their decline. Thereupon the Brahman Basakara spoke thus to the Blessed One, If the Bajjis Venerable Gautama were endowed with only one or another of these conditions leading to welfare, their growth would have to be expected, not their decline. What then of all the seven, no harm indeed, can be done to the Bajjis in battle by Magadha's king, Ajat Sattu, except through trickery or discord? Well then, Venerable Gautama, we will take our leave, for we have much to perform, much work to do. Do as now seems fit to you, Brahman, and the Brahman Vasakara, the chief minister of Magadha, approving of the Blessed One's words and delighted by them, rose from his seat and departed. Welfare of the Bhikkhus Then soon after Vasakara's departure, the Blessed One addressed the Venerable Ananda thus, Go now, Ananda, and assemble in the hall of audience as many bhikkhus as live around Rajagaha. Very well, Lord, and the venerable Ananda did as he was requested and informed the Blessed One. The community of bhikkhus is assembled, Lord. Now let the Blessed One do as he wishes. Thereupon the Blessed One rose from his seat, went up to the hall of audience, took his appointed seat there, and addressed the bhikkhus thus. Seven conditions leading to welfare I shall set forth, because listen and pay heed to what I shall say. So be it, Lord. The growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected, not their decline, because so long as they assemble frequently and in large numbers, meet and disperse peacefully and attend to the affairs of the Sangha in concord, so long as they appoint no new rules and do not abolish the existing ones, but proceed in accordance with the code of training Vinaya laid down. So long as they show respect, honor, esteem and veneration towards the iller bhikkhus, those of long standing, long gone forth, the fathers and leaders of the Sangha, and think it worthwhile to listen to them, so long as they do not come under the power of craving that leads to fresh becoming, so long as they cherish the forest depth for their dwellings, so long as they establish themselves in mindfulness, so that virtuous brethren of the order who have not come yet might do so, and those who already come might live in peace, so long, because as these seven conditions leading to welfare, enduring among the bhikkhus, and the bhikkhus are known for it, their growth is to be as expected, not their decline. Seven further conditions leading to welfare I shall set forth, Bhikkhus, listen and pay he heed to what I shall say. So be it, Lord. The growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected, not their decline. Bhikkhus, so long as they do not delight in, are not pleased with, and are not fond of activities, talk, sleep, and company. So long as they do not harbor, do not come under the spell of evil, desires, have no bad, fr bad friends, associates, or companions, and so long as they do not stop half halfway on account of some trifling achievement. So long bhikkhus as these seven conditions leading to welfare endure among the bhikkhus and the bhikkhus are known for it, their growth is to be expected, not their decline. Seven good qualities. Seven further conditions leading to welfare I shall set forth bhikkhus listen and pay heed to what I shall say. So be it, Lord. The growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected, not their decline, bhikkhus, so long as they shall have faith, so long as they have moral shame and fear of misconduct, are proficient in learning, resolute, 
mindful and wise so long bhikkhus as these seven conditions leading to welfare endure among the bhikkhus and the bhikkhus are known for it their growth is to be expected not their decline seven factors of enlightenment seven further conditions leading to welfare i shall set forth bhikkhus listen and pay heed to what i shall say so be it lord the growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected not their decline bhikkhus as long as they cultivate the seven factors of enlightenment that is mindfulness investigation into phenomena energy bliss tra- tranquility concentration and equanimity so long bhikkhus as these seven conditions leading to welfare endure among the bhikkhus and bhikkhus are known for it their growth is to be expected not their decline seven perceptions seven further conditions leading to welfare i shall set forth bhikkhus listen and pay heed to what i shall say so be it lord the growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected not their decline bhikkhus so long as they cultivate the perception of impermanence of egolessness of the body's impurity of the body's wretchedness of relinquishment of dispassion and of cessation so long bhikkhus as these seven conditions leading to welfare endure among the bhikkhus and the bhikkhus are known for it their growth is to be expected not their decline six conditions to be remembered six further conditions leading to welfare i shall set forth bhikkhus listen and pay heed to what i shall say so be it lord the growth of the bhikkhus is to be expected not their decline bhikkhus so long as they attend on each other with loving kindness in deed word and thought both openly and in private so long as in respect of what they receive as due offerings even the contents of their arms bowls they do not make use of them without sharing them with virtuous members of the community so long as in company with their brethren they train themselves openly and in private in the rules of conduct which are complete and perfect sportless and pure liberating praised liberating praised by the wise uninfluenced by mundane concerns and favorable to concentration of mind and in company with their brethren preserve openly and in private the insight that is noble and liberating and leads one who acts upon it to the utter destruction of suffering so long bhikkhus as these six conditions leading to the welfare endure among the bhikkhus and the bhikkhus are known for it their growth is to be expected not their decline counsel to the bhikkhus and the blessed one living at rajgaha at the hill uh, called vulture speak often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus such and such is virtue such and such is concentration and such and such is wisdom great becomes the fruit great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct great becomes the fruit great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration utterly freed from the taints of lost becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom when the blessed one had stayed at rajagaha as long as he pleased he addressed the venerable ananda thus come ananda let us go to ambalatthika so be it lord and the blessed one took up his abode at ambalatthika together with a large community of monks at ambalatthika the blessed one came to stay in the king's rest house and there too the blessed one often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus such and such is virtue such and such is concentration and such and such is wisdom great becomes the fruits great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct great becomes the fruit great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration utterly free from the taints of lost becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom when the blessed one had stayed at ambalatthika as long as he pleased he addressed the venerable ananda thus come ananda let us go to nalanda so be it lord and the blessed one took up his abode at nalanda together with his with a large community of bhikkhus and came to stay in the mango group of pavarika Sariputta's lion's roar Then the venerable Sariputta went to the blessed one respectfully greeted him sat down at one side and spoke thus to him This faith lord i have in the blessed one that there has not been there will not be 
nor is there now another recluse or Brahman more exalted in enlightenment than the Blessed One. Lofty indeed is this speech of your Sariputta, and lordly, I bo a bold utterance, a veritable sounding of the lion's roar. But how is this Sariputta? Those Arahants fully enlightened, once of the past, do we have direct personal knowledge of, of all those blessed ones? As, as to their virtue, their meditation, their wisdom, their abiding, and their emancipation, emancipation? No, not so, Lord. Then how is this Sariputta, those Arahants, fully enlightened ones of the future? Do you have direct personal knowledge of all, the, all those blessed ones, as to their virtue, their meditation, their wisdom, their abiding, and their emancipation? Not so, Lord. Then how is this Sariputta of me, who am at present the Arahant, the fully enlightened one? Do you have direct personal knowledge as to my virtue, my meditation, my wisdom, my abiding, and my emancipation? Not so, Lord. Then it is clear, Sariputta, that you have no di such direct personal knowledge of the Arahats, the fully enlightened ones of the past, the future, and the present. How then, dear, you set forth a speech so lofty and lordly, an utterance so bold, a veritable sounding of the lion's roar, saying, This faith, Lord, I have in the Blessed One, that there has not been, there will not be, nor is there now another recluse or Brahman more exalted in enlightenment than the Blessed One. No such direct personal knowledge indeed is mine, Lord, of the Arahants, the fully enlightened ones of the past, the future, and the present. And yet I have come to know the lawfulness of the Dhamma. Suppose, Lord, a king's frontier fortress was strongly fortified with strong ramparts and turrets, and it had a single gate, and there was a gatekeeper, intelligent, experienced, and prudent, who would keep out the stranger but allow the friend to enter. As he patrols the path that leads all around the fortress, he does not perceive a hole or fissure in the ramparts, even big enough to allow a cat to slip through. So he comes to the conclusion, whatever grosser living things are to enter or leave this city, they will all have to do so just by this gate. In the same way, Lord, I have, to, I have come to know the lawfulness of the Dhamma. For, Lord, all the blessed ones, Arahants, fully enlightened ones of the past had abandoned the five hindrances. The mental defilements that weaken wisdom had well established their minds in the four foundations of mindfulness, had duly cultivated the seven factors of enlightenment and were fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. And Lord, all the blessed ones, Arahants, fully enlightened ones of the future will abandon the five hindrances, the mental defilements that weaken wisdom will well establish their minds in the four foundations of mindfulness, will duly cultivate the seven factors of enlightenment, and will be fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. And the Blessed One, to Lord, being at present the Arahant, the fully enlightened one, has abandoned the five hindrances, the mental defilements that weaken wisdom, has well established his mind in the four foundation of mindfulness, has duly cultivated the seven factors of enlightenment and is fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. And also in Nalanda, in the mango group of Pavarika, the Blessed One often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus, Such and such is virtue, such and such is concentration, and such and such is wisdom. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration. Utterly freed from the taints of lost becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom. When the Blessed One had stayed at Nalanda as long as he pleased, he addressed the venerable Ananda thus. Come Ananda, let us go to Patali Gama. So be it, Lord. And the Blessed One took of his ab abode at Patali Gama together with a, with a large community of bhikkhus. Then the devotees of Patali Gama came to know, the Blessed One, they say, has arrived at Patali Gama, and they approached the Blessed One, respectfully greeted him, 
sat down at one side and addressed him thus, May the Blessed One, Lord, kindly visit our council hall and the Blessed One consented by his silence. Knowing the Blessed One's consent, the devotees of Pataligama rose from their seats, respectfully saluted him, and keeping their right sides towards him, departed, departed for the council hall. Then they prepared the council hall by covering the floor all over, arranging seats and water, and setting out a wild lamp. Having done this, they returned to the Blessed One, respectfully greeted him, and standing at one side, announced, Lord, the council hall is ready, with the floor covered all over, seats and water prepared, and an oil lamp has been set out. Let the Blessed One come, Lord, at His convenience. And the Blessed One got ready, and taking his bowl and robe, went to the council hall together with the company of Fikkus. After rinsing his feet, the Blessed One entered the council hall and took his seat close to the middle pillar facing east. The community of Vikkus, after rinsing their feet, also entered the council hall and took seats near the western hall, western wall, facing east, so that the Blessed One was before them. And the devotees of Pataligama, after rinsing their feet and entering the council, council hall, sat down near the eastern wall, facing west, so that the Blessed One was in front of them. The Fruits of an Moral and Immoral and Moral Life Thereupon the Blessed One addressed the devotees of Patali Gama thus, The immoral man householders, by falling away from virtue, encounters five perils, great loss of wealth through heedlessness, an evil reputation, a timid and troubled de demeanor in every society, be it that of nobles, brahmans, householders, or, or ascetics, death in be wilderment, and at the breaking up of the body after death, rebirth in a realm of misery in an unhappy state in the nether world in hell. Five blessings householders accrue to the righteous man through his practice of virtue, great increase of wealth through his diligence, a favorable reputation, a confident deportment without timidity in every society, be it that of nobles, brahmans, householders, or ascetics, a serene death, and at the breaking of, breaking off of the body after death, rebirth in a happy state in a heavenly world. And the Blessed One spent much of the night instructing the devotees of Pataligama in the Dhamma, rousing, edifying, and gladdening him, glad, gladdening them. After which he dismissed them, saying, "The night is far advanced, householders. You may go at your convenience." So be it, Lord, and the, and the devotees of Pataligama rose from their seats, respectfully saluted the Blessed One, and keeping their right sides towards Him, departed. And the Blessed One, soon after their departure, retired into privacy. At that time, Sunida and Basakara, the chief ministers of Magadha, were rebuilding a fortress at Pataligama in defense against the Bajjiz. And deities in large numbers counted in thousands had taken possession of sites at Pataligama. In the region where deities of great power prevailed, office of, officials of great power were bent on constructing edifice. And where deities of medium power and lesser uh, power prevailed, officials of medium and lesser power were bent on constructing edifice. And the Blessed One saw with the heavenly eye pure and transcending the faculty of men, the deities, counted in thousands, where they had taken possession of sites in Pataligama, and rising before the night was spent towards dawn, the Blessed One addressed the Venerable Ananda thus, Who is it, Ananda, that is erecting a city at Pataligama? Sunida and Basankara, Basakkara, Lord, the chief minister of Magadha, are building a fortress at Pataligama in defense against the Bajjis. It is Ananda, as if Sunida and Basakara had taken counsel with the gods of the 31, 30, 33. For I beheld Ananda with the heavenly eye, pure and transcending uh, the, pure, uh, the faculty of men, a large number of deities counted in thousands that have taken possession of, the, of sites at Pataligama. In the region where deities of great power prevail, officials of great power are bent on constructing edifices, and where deities of medium and lesser power prevail, officials of medium and lesser power are bent on constructing edifices, 
truly ananda as far as the aryan race extend and trade routes spread this will be the foremost city pataliputta or trade center but pataliputta ananda will be assailed by three perils fire water and dissension then sunida and basakara went to the blessed one and after courteous greeting to the blessed one and exchanging many pleasant words they stood at one side and addressed him thus may the venerable gotama please accept our invitation for tomorrow's meal together with the communities of fikkus and the blessed one consented by his silence knowing the blessed one's consent sunida and basakara departed departed from for their own edo abodes where they had twice food hard and soft prepared and when it was time they announced to the blessed one it is time venerable gotama the meal is ready there upon the blessed one got ready in the forenoon and taking bowl and robe he went together with with the community of vikus to the abode of sunida and basakara where he took the seat prepared for him and sunida and basakara themselves themselves attended on the community of vikus headed by the buddha and served them with choice food hard and soft when the blessed one had finished his meal and had removed his hand from his bo- from the bowl they took low seats and sat down at one side and the blessed one thanked them with these stanzas wherever he may dwell the prudent man ministers to the chaste and virtuous and having to these worthy ones made gifts he shares his merits with the local devas and so revered they honor him in turn are gracious to him even as a mother is towards her one her only son and he who thus enjoys the devas grace and is by them beloved good fortune sees after this the blessed one rose from his seat and departed departed crossing the ganges then sunida and basakara followed behind the blessed one step by step saying through whichever gate the recluse gotama will depart today that we will name the gotama gate and and the ford by which he will cross the river ganges shall be named the gotama ford and so it came to pass where the gate was concerned but when the blessed one came to the river ganges it was full to the brim so that crowds crowds could drink from it and some people went it surf of a boat or float while others tied up a raft because they desired to get across but the blessed one as quickly as a strong man might might stretch out his bent arm or draw in his outstretched arm vanished from this side of the river ganges and came to stand on the yonder side other side and the blessed one saw the people who desired to cross searching for a boat or float while others were binding rafts and then the blessed one seeing them thus gave forth the solemn utterance they who have breathed the ocean vast leaving the lowlands far behind while others is while others still their frail rafts bind are saved by wisdom unsurpassed part 2 the journey to vesali the four noble truth now the blessed one spoke to the venerable ananda saying come ananda let us go to koti gama so be it lord and the blessed one took up his abode at koti gama together with a large community of bhikkhus and the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus saying bhikkhus it is through not realizing through not penetrating the four noble truths that this long course of birth and death has been passed through and undergone by me as well as by you what are these four they are the noble truth of suffering the noble truth of origin of suffering the noble truth of cessation of suffering and the noble truth of the way to the cessation of suffering but now because that these have been realized and penetrated cut off is the craving of for existence destroyed is that which leads to renowned becoming and there is no fresh becoming thus it was said by the blessed one and the happy one the master further said through not seeing the four noble truths long was the weary path from birth to birth when these are known removed is rebirth cause thus root of sorrow plucked 
then in rebirth and also at kotigama the blessed one of often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus such and such is virtue such and such is concentration and such and such is wisdom great becomes the fruit great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct great becomes the fruit great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration utterly freed from the taints of lust becoming an ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom when the blessed one had stayed at kotigama as long as he pleased he spoke to the venerable ananda saying come ananda let us go to nadika so be it lord and the blessed one took off his abode in nadika together with a large community of bhikkhus staying in the brick house the four specific attainments then the, then the venerable ananda approached the blessed one and after greeting him respectfully sat down at one side and he said to the blessed one here in nandika lord there have passed away the bhikkhu salha and bhikkhuni nanda likewise there have passed away the layman sudatta and the lay women sujata likewise the layman kakudha kalinga nikata katisabha tutha santutha badda and subadda what is their destiny lord what is their future state the bhikkhu salha ananda through the destruction of the taints in this very lifetime has attained to the taint free deliverance of mind and deliverance through wisdom having directly known and realized it by himself the bhikkhuni nanda ananda through the destruction of the five lower fetters that bind belongs beings to the world of the senses has arisen spontaneously among the suddha vasa deities and will come to the final cessation in that very place not liable to return from that world the layman sudatta ananda through the destruction of the three fetters self belief doubt and faith in the efficacy of rituals and observances and the lessening of lost hatred and delusion has become a once returner and is bound to make an end of suffering after having returned but once more to this world the lay women sujata ananda through the destruction of the three fetters has become a stream intruder and is safe from falling into the states of misery assured and bound for enlightenment the layman kalkuda ananda through the destruction of the five lower fetters that bind uh, that bind beings to the world of senses has arisen spontaneously among the suddha vasa deities and will come to final cessation in that very place not liable to return from that world so it is with kalinga nikata katti sabha tutha santutha padda and subadda and with more than 50 laymen in nadika more than 90 laymen who has who have passed away in nadika ananda through the destruction of the three fetters and the lessening of lost hatred and delusion have become once returners and are bound to make an end of suffering after having returned but once more into this world more than 500 laymen who have passed away in nadika ananda through the complete destruction of the three fetters have become stream interrupters and are safe from falling into the states of misery assured and bound for enlightenment the mirror of the dhamma but truly ananda it is nothing strange that human beings should die but if each time it happens you should come to the tathagata and ask about them in this manner indeed it would be troublesome to him therefore ananda i will give you the teaching called the mirror of the dhamma possessing who is the noble disciple should he so desire can declare of himself there is no more reward for me in hell nor as an animal nor or ghost nor in any realm of o a steam interrupter am i safe from falling into the states of misery assured am i and bound for enlightenment and what ananda is their teaching called the mirror of dhamma possessing who is the noble disciple may thus declare of himself in this case ananda the noble disciple possesses unwavering faith in the buddha thus the blessed one is an arahant the fully enlightened one perfect in knowledge and conduct the happy one the knower of the world the paramount trainers trainer of beings the teacher of gods and men the enlightened one the blessed one he possesses unwavering faith in the dhamma thus well propounded by the blessed one is the dhamma evident timeless inviting investigation 
leading to emancipation to be comprehended by the wise is for himself. He possesses unwavering faith in the Blessed One's order of disciples. Thus, well fearing is the Blessed One's order of disciples, righteously, wisely and dutifully. That is to say, the four peers of men, the eight classes of persons, the Blessed One's order of disciples is worthy of honor, of hospitality, of offerings, of veneration, the supreme field of meritorious deeds in the world. And he possesses virtues that are dear to the noble ones, complete and perfect, sportless and pure, which are liberating, liberating praised by the wise, in, uninfluenced by worldly concerns, and favorable to the concentration of mind. This Ananda is the teaching called the mirror of Dhamma whereby the noble disciple may, do, may, know thus, may thus know of himself. There is no more rebirth for me in hell, nor as an animal or ghost, nor in any realm of woe. I esteem interer am I safe from falling into the states of misery, assured am I and bound for enlightenment. And also in Nadika, in the brick house, the Blessed One often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus, such and such is virtue, virtue, such and such is concentration, and such and such is wisdom. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of concentration, and when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct, great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of wisdom, when it is fully developed by concentration. Utterly freed from the taints of lust, becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom. When the Blessed One had stayed in Nadika as long as he pleased, he spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, Come, Ananda, let us go to Vesali. So be it, O Lord. And the Blessed One took off his abode in Vesali together with a large community of bhikkhus and stayed in Ambapali's grove. Mindfulness and clear comprehension. Then the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus, saying, Mindful should you dwell, bhikkhus, clearly comprehending, Thus I exhort you. And how Vikus is a Vikku mindful when he dwells contemplating the body in the mind, sorry, in the body, earnestly, clearly comprehending and mindfully after having overcome desire and sorrow in regard to the world, and when he dwells contemplating feelings in feelings, the mind in the mind, and mental objects in mental objects, earnestly, clearly comprehending and mindfully after having overcome desire and sorrow in regard to the world then is he said to be mindful and how bhikkhus does a bhikkhu have clear comprehension when he remains fully aware of his coming and going his looking forward and his looking away his bending and stretching his wearing of his robe and carrying of his bowl his eating and drinking masticating and savoring, his defecating and urinating, his walking, standing, sitting, lying down, going to sleep or keeping awake, his speaking or being silent, then is he said to have clear comprehension. Mindful should you dwell vikkhus, clearly comprehending, thus I exhort you. Amba, Amba Pali and Lichabiz. Then Amba Pali, the courtesan, came to know, the Blessed One, they say, has arrived at Besali and is now staying in my mango group. And she ordered a large number of magnificent carriages to be made ready, mounted one of them herself, and accompanied by the rest, drove out from Besali towards her park. She went by carriage as far as the carriage could go, then alighted, and approaching the Blessed One on foot, she respectfully greeted him and sat down at one side. And the Blessed One instructed Ammapali the quotation in the Dhamma and roused, edified and gladdened her. Therefore Ammapali the quotation spoke to the Blessed One saying, May the Blessed One, O Lord, please accept my invitation for tomorrow's meal together with the community of Vikus. And by his silence the Blessed One consented. Sure then of the Blessed One's consen consent, Ammapali the quotation rose from her seat respectfully saluted him and keeping her right side toward him, took her departure. Then the Lichabi of Vesali came to know, the Blessed One, they say, has arrived at Vesali and is now staying in Ambapali's group, and they ordered a large number of magnificent carriages to be made ready, each mounted one, 
and accompanied by the rest drove out from Besali. Now of these Lichavis, some were in blue with clothing and ornaments all of blue, while others were in yellow, red and white. And it has and, and it so happened that Ambapali the quotation drove up against the yog, young Lichavis, axle by axle, wheel by wheel, and yoke by yoke. Thereupon the Lichavis exclaimed, why do you drive up against us in this fashion, Ambapali? Thus it is indeed my princess, and not otherwise, for the Blessed One is invited by me for tomorrow's meal together with the community of Fikkuj. Give up the meal, Ambapali, for a hundred thousand. But she, uh, she replied, Even if you were to give me a Besali, swords, together with its tributary lands, I would not give up a meal of such importance. Then the Lichabij snapped their fingers in annoyance. See friends, we are defeated by this mango lass. We are utterly outdone by this mango lass. But they continued on their way to Ammapali's grove. And the Blessed One beheld the Lichabij from afar as they drove up. Then he spoke to the Vikus, saying, those of you bhikkhus who have not yet seen the thirty-three gods may behold the assembly of the Lichavis and may gaze on them for they are comparable to the assembly of the thirty-three gods. Then the Lichavis drove their carriages as far as the carriage could go, then alighted and approaching the Blessed One on foot, they respectfully greeted him and sat down at one side. The Blessed One instructed the Lichavis in the Dhamma and roused, edified, and gladdened them. Thereafter the Lichavi spoke to the Blessed One, saying, May the Blessed One, O Lord, please accept our invitation for tomorrow's meal, together with the community of Ikkuz. The invitation for tomorrow's meal, Lichavis, has been accepted by me from Ambapali, the quotation. Then the Lichavis snapped their fingers in annoyance. See, friends, we are defeated by this mango lass. We are utterly outdone by this mango lass. And then the Lichabis, approving of the Blessed One's words and delighted with them, rose from their seats, respectfully saluted him, and keeping their right um, sides towards him, took their departure. Then after the night had passed, Ammapali, the quotation, had twice food, hard and soft, prepared in her park, and announced it to the Blessed One. It is time, O Lord, the meal is ready. Thereupon the Blessed One got ready in the forenoon, and taking bowl and robe, he went together with the community of Bhikkhus to Ambapali's dwelling, and there he took the seat prepared for him. And Ambapali herself attended on the community of Bhikkhus, headed by the Buddha, and served them with choice food, hard and soft. And when the Blessed One had finished his meal, and had removed his hand from his bowl, Ambapali, the quotation, took a low seat and placing herself at one side, spoke to the Blessed One, saying, This park, O Lord, I offer to the community of Vikhus headed by the Buddha. And the Blessed One accepted the park. He then instructed Ambapali in the Dhamma, and having roused, edified, and gladdened her, he rose from his seat and departed. departed. And also at Vesali in Ambapali's group, the Blessed One often gave counsel to the Vikkhus thus, such and such is virtue, such and such is concentration, and such and such is wisdom. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of concentration, when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of wisdom, when it is fully developed by concentration, utterly freed from the taints of lust, Becoming an ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom. When the Blessed One had stayed in Ambapali's grove, as long as he pleased, he spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, Come, Ananda, let us go to the village of Deluba. So be it, Lord. And the Blessed One took off his abode in the village of Deluba, together with a large community of Ikkhus. The Blessed One's Deadly Sickness at that time, the Blessed One spoke to the Vikus, saying, Go now, Vikus, and seek shelter anywhere in the neighborhood of Vesali, where you are welcome, among acquaintances and friends, 
and there spend the rainy season. As for me, I shall spend the rainy season in this very place, in the village of Veluba. So be it, O Lord, the Bhikkhu said. But when the Blessed One had entered upon the rainy season, there arose in him a severe illness, and sharp and deadly pains came upon him. And the Blessed One endured them mindfully, clearly comprehending and unperturbed. Then it occurred to the Blessed One, it would not be fitting if I came to my final passing away without addressing those who attended on me, without taking leave of the community of Vikhus. Then let me suppress this illness by strength of will, resolve to maintain the life process and live on. And the Blessed One suppressed the illness by strength of will, resolve to maintain the life process and lived on. So it came about that the Blessed One's illness was allayed. And the Blessed One recovered from that illness, and soon after his recovery, he came out from his dwelling place and sat down in the shade of the building, on a seat prepared for him. Then the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, respectfully greeted him, and sitting down at one side, he spoke to the Blessed One, saying, Fortunate it is for me, O Lord, to see the Blessed One at ease again. Fortunate it is for me, O Lord, to see the Blessed One recovered. For truly, Lord, when I saw the Blessed One's sickness, it was as though my own body became weak as a creeper. Everything around became dim to me and my senses failed, failed me. Yet, Lord, I still had some little comfort in the thought that the Blessed One would not come to his final passing away until he had given some last instructions respecting the community of Vikhus. Thus spoke the Venerable Ananda, but the Blessed One answered him, saying, What more does the community of Vikhus expect from me, Ananda? I have set forth the Dhamma without making any distinction of esoteric and exoteric doctrine. There is nothing, Ananda, with regard to the teachings that the Tathagata holds to the last with the closed fist of a teacher who keeps some things back. Whosoever may think that it is he who should lead the community of Vikhus or that the community depends upon him, it is such a <coughs> one that would have to give last instructions respecting them. But Ananda, the Tathagata, has no such idea as that it is he who should lead the community of Vikhus or that the community depends on, upon him. So what instructions should he give? So, <coughs> so what instructions should he have to give respecting the community of Vikhus? Now I am frail Ananda, old aged, far gone in years. This is my 80th year and my life is spent. Even as an old cart Ananda is held together with much difficulty, so the body of Tathagata is kept going only with supports. It is Ananda only when the Tathagata, disregarding external objects with the cessation of certain feelings, attends to and abides in the signless concentration of mind that his body is more comfortable. Therefore, Ananda, be isolated unto yourselves, refuses unto yourselves, seeking no external refuge. With the Dhamma as your island, the Dhamma as your refuge, seeking no other refuge. And how Ananda is a bhikkhu and island unto himself, a refuge unto himself, seeking no external refuge. With the Dhamma as his island, the Dhamma as his refuge, seeking no other refuge. When he dwells contemplating the body in the body, earnestly, clearly comprehending and mindfully, after having overcome desire and sorrow in regard to the world, when he dwells contemplating feelings in feelings, the mind in the mind and mental objects in mental objects, earnestly, clearly comprehending and mindfully, after having overcome desire and sorrow in regard to the world, then truly he is an island unto himself, a refuge unto himself, seeking no external refuge, Having the Dhamma as his island, the Dhamma as his refuge, seeking no other refuge. Those bhikkhus of mine, Ananda, who now or after I am gone, abide as an island unto themselves, as a refuge unto themselves, seeking no other refuge. Having the Dhamma as their island and refuge, seeking no other refuge, it is they who will become the highest, if they have desired to learn. Part 3 relinquishing the will to live. 
द ब्लेसेड वन प्रोमटिंग देन द ब्लेसेड वन गेटिंग रेडी इन द फोर नोन टूक बाउल एंड रोब एंड वेंट इन टू बेसाली फॉर आर्म्स आफ्टर द आर्म्स राउंड एंड मील ऑन हिज रिटर्न ही स्पोक टू द वेंडेबल आनंद सेइंग टेक अप अ मैट आनंद एंड लेट अस स्पेंड द डे एट द चपला श्राइन सो बी इट लॉर्ड एंड द वेंडेबल आनंद टूक अप अ मैट एंड फॉलोड बिहाइंड द ब्लेसेड वन स्टेप बाय स्टेप एंड द ब्लेसेड वन वेंट टू चपला चपला श्राइन एंड सेट डाउन ऑन द सीट प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर हिम and when the venerable ananda had seated himself at one side after he had respectfully saluted the blessed one the lord said to him pleasant ananda is besali pleasant are the shrines of udena gotamaka satambaka bahuputta sarandata and sapala and the blessed one said whosoever ananda has developed practiced employed strengthened maintain scrutinized and brought to perfection the four constituents of psychic power could if he, if he so desired remain throughout a world period or until the end of it the tathagat ananda has done so therefore the tathagat could if she if he so desired remain throughout a world period or until the end of it but the venerable ananda was unable to grasp the plain suggestion the significant prompting given by the blessed one as though his mind was influenced by mara he did not beseech the blessed one may the blessed one remain o lord may the happy one remain o lord throughout the world period for the welfare and happiness of the multitude out of compassion for the world for the benefit well being and happiness of gods and men and when for a second and a third time the blessed one repeated his words the venerable ananda remained silent then the blessed one said to the venerable ananda go now ananda and do as seems fit to you even so o lord and the venerable ananda rising from his seat respectfully saluted the blessed one and keeping his right side towards him took his seat under a tree some distance away Mara's appeal and when the venerable ananda had gone away mara the evil one approached the blessed one and standing at one side he spoke to the blessed one saying now o lord let the blessed one come to his final passing away let the happy one utterly pass away the time has come for the parinibbana of the lord for the blessed one o lord spoke these words to me i shall not come to my final passing away evil one until my bhikkhus and bhikkhunis laymen and laywomen have come to be true disciples wise well disciplined disciplined apt and learned preservers of the dhamma living according to the dhamma abiding by the appropriate conduct and having learned the master's word are able to expound it preach it proclaim it establish it reveal it explain it in detail and make it clear until when adverse opinions arise they shall be able to refute them thoroughly and well and to preach this convincing and liberating dhamma and now o lord bhikkhus and bhikkhunis laymen and laywomen have become the blessed ones disciples in just this way so o lord let the blessed one come to his final passing away the time has come for the parinibbana of the lord for the blessed one o lord spoke these words to me i shall not come to my final passing away evil one until this holy life taught by me has become successful prosperous far renowned popular and wide spread until it is well pro- proclaimed among gods and men and this too has come to pass in just this way so o lord let the blessed one come to his final passing away let the happy one utterly pass away the time has come for the parinibbana of the lord the blessed one relinquishes his will to live When this was said the blessed one spoke to Mara the evil one saying do not trouble yourself evil one before long the parinibbana of the tathagata will come about 3 months hence the tathagata will utterly pass away and at the chapala shrine the blessed one thus mindfully and clearly comprehending renounces his will to live on and upon the lord's renouncing his will to live on there came a tremendous earthquake 
dreadful and astonishing, and thunder rolled across the heavens. And the Blessed One beheld it with understanding and made the solemn utterances. What causes life unbounded or confined, his process of becoming this, the sage, renounces with inward calm and joy he breaks as, as though a coat of mail his one life's cause. Then it came to the mind of Venerable Ananda, marvelous it is indeed and, mo the most, and most wonderful. The earth shakes mightily, tremendously, dreadful and astonishing. It is how the thunder roll across the heavens. What could be the reason, what the cause, that so mighty an earthquake should arise? Eight Causes of earthquake, Earthquakes and the venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One and respectfully greeting him, sat down to one side. Then he spoke to the Blessed One, saying, Marvelous it is indeed and most wonderful. The earth shakes mightily, tremendously, dreadful and astonishing it is how the thunders roll across the heavens. What could be the reason, what the cause, that so mighty an earthquake should arise? Then the Blessed One said, there are eight reasons, Ananda, eight causes for a mighty earthquake to arise. What are those eight? This great earth, Ananda, is established upon liquid, the liquid upon the atmosphere, and the atmosphere upon space. And when Ananda, mighty atmospheric disturbances take place, the liquid is agitated, and with the agitation of the liquid, uh, tremors of earth arises. This is the first reason, the first cause for the arising of mighty earthquakes. Again Ananda, when an ascetic or holy man of great power, one who has gained mastery of his mind, or a deity who is mighty and potent, develops intense concentration on the delimited aspect of the earth element, and to a boundless degree on the liquid element, he too causes the earth to tremble, quiver and shake. This is the second reason, the second cause for the arising of mighty earthquakes. Again Ananda, when the Bodhisattva departs from the Tushita realm and descends into his mother's home, mindfully and clearly comprehending, and when the Bodhisattva comes out from his mother's womb, mindfully and clearly comprehending, and when the Tathagata becomes fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment, when the Tathagata sets rolling the, un, rolling the excellent wheel of the, wheel of the Dhamma, when the Tathagata renounces his will to live on, and when the Tathagata comes to pass away into the state of Nibbana, in which no element of clinging remains, then to Ananda this great earth trembles, quivers, and shakes. These Ananda are the eight reasons, the eight causes for a great earthquake to arise. Eight assemblies. Now there are eight kinds of assemblies Ananda. That is to say, assemblies of nobles, brahmans, householders, or ascetics of the great, of the four great kings, of the thirty-three gods of Maharaj and of Brahmas, Brahmas. And I recall Ananda, how I have attended each of these eight kinds of assemblies, amounting to hundreds. And before seating myself and starting the conversation or the discussion. I made my appearance resemble theirs, my voice resemble theirs, and so I taught them the Dhamma, and roused, edified, and gladdened them. Yet while I was speaking to them thus, they did not know me, and they would inquire of one another, asking, Who is he that speaks to us? Is it man or a god? Then having taught them the Dhamma, and roused, edified, and gladdened them, I would straight away vanish. And when I had finished too, they did not know me, and they would inquire of one another, asking, Who is he that he has finished? Is it a man or a god? And such ananda are the eight kinds of assemblies. Eight fields of mastery. Now there are eight fields of mastery ananda. What are those eight? When one perceiving forms subjectively, sees small forms, beautiful or ugly, external to himself and mastering them is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are. This is the first field of mastery. When one perceiving forms subjectively sees large forms, is beautiful or ugly, external to himself and mastering them is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are. This is the second field of 
mastery. When one not perceiving form subjectively sees small forms, beautiful or ugly, external to himself and mastering them, is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are, this is the third field of mastery. When one not perceiving forms subjectively sees large forms, beautiful or ugly, external to himself and mastering them, is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are, this is the fourth field of mastery. When one not perceiving forms subjectively sees forms external to himself that are blue, blue in color, of a blue luster like the bluesums of flags or like fine Banaras muslin which burnished on both sides is blue, blue in color, of a blue luster. When such a one sees forms external to himself that are blue and mastering them is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are this is the fifth field of mastery when one not perceiving forms subjectively sees forms external to himself that are yellow yellow in color of a yellow luster like the kanikara blossom or like fine banaras muslin which burnished on both sides is yellow yellow in color of a yellow luster when such a one sees forms external to himself that are yellow and mastering them is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are. This is the sixth field of mastery. When one not perceiving forms subjectively sees forms external to himself that are red, red in color of a red luster like the Bunda Jivaka Bluzum, Bandu Jivaka Bluzum, or like fine Banaras muslin which burnished on both sides is red, red in color of a red luster. luster. When such a one sees forms external to himself that are red and mastering them, is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are. This is the seventh field of mastery. When one not perceiving forms subjectively sees forms external to himself that are white, white in color, of a white luster like the morning star or like fine Banaras muslin which burnished on both sides is white, white in color, of a white luster. When such a one sees forms external to himself that are white and mastering them, is aware that he perceives and knows them as they are, this is the eighth field of mastery. These ananda are the eight fields of mastery. Eight liberations. Now, the, there are eight liberations ananda. What are those eight? One self having form, one perceives forms. This is the first liberation. Being of unaware of one's one form, one perceives forms external to oneself. This is the second liberation. Experiencing loveliness, one is intent upon it. This is the third liberation. By utterly transcending the perceptions of matter, by the disappearance of the perceptions of sense reaction, and by giving no attention to diversity perceptions, one becomes aware of, attends to, and abides in the sphere of infinite space. This is the fourth liberation. By utterly trans transcend transcending the sphere of infinite space, one becomes aware of, attends to, and abides in the sphere of infinite consciousness. This is the fifth liberation. By utterly trans transcending the sphere of infinite consciousness, one becomes aware of, attends to, and abides in the sphere of nothingness. This is the sixth liberation. By utterly transcending the sphere of nothingness, one attends to and abides in the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. This is the seventh liberation. By utterly transcending the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, one attends to and abides in the cessation of perception and sensation. This is the eighth liberation. These ananda are the eight liberations. Mara's former temptation. There was a time, Ananda, when I dwelt at Urubela on the bank of Niranjara River at the foot of the goat herd's banyan tree. Soon after my supreme enlightenment, and Mara, the evil one, approached me, saying, Now, O Lord, let the blessed one come to his pass final passing away. Let the happy one utterly pass away. The time has come for the parinibbana of the Lord. Then Ananda, I answered, the Mar I answered Mara, the evil one, saying, 
I shall not come to my final passing away evil one until my bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, laymen and laywomen have come to be true disciples, wise, well-disciplined, disciplined, apt and learned, preservers of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, abiding by appropriate conduct and having learned the master's words, are able to expound it, preach it, proclaim it, establish it, reveal it, explain it in detail and make it clear until when adverse opinions arise, they shall be able to refute them thoroughly and well and to preach this convincing and liberating Dhamma. I shall not come to my final passing of a evil one until this holy life taught by me has become successful, prosperous, far-renowned, popular and widespread until it is well, well proclaimed among gods and men. And again today Ananda at the Sapala shrine Mara, the evil one approached me saying, Now, O Lord, bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, laymen and laywomen have come to be true disciples of the Blessed One, wise, well-disciplined, apt and learned, preservers of, dhamma, of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, abiding in the appropriate conduct, <coughs> and having learned the Master's word, are able to expound it, preach it, proclaim it, establish it, reveal it, explain it in detail and make it clear, and when adverse opinions arise, they are now able to refute them thoroughly and well, and to preach this, un uh, <coughs> preach this convincing and liberating Dhamma. And now, O Lord, this holy life taught by the Blessed One has become successful, prosperous, far-renowned, popular and widespread, and it is well proclaimed among gods and men. Therefore, O Lord, let the Blessed One come to His final passing away. Let the happy one utterly pass away. The time has come for the Parinibbana of the Lord. And then Ananda, I answered Mara, the evil one, saying, Do not trouble yourself, evil one. Before long, the Parinibbana of the Tathagat will come out, come, come about. Three months hence, the Tathagat will utterly pass away. And in this way, Ananda, today at the Chapala shrine, the Tathagata has renounced his will to live on. Ananda's appeal. At these words, the Venerable Ananda spoke to the Blessed One, saying, May the Blessed One remain, O Lord, may, may the Happy One remain, O Lord, throughout the world period, for the welfare and happiness of the multitude, out of compassion for the world, for the benefit, well-being and happiness of gods and men. And the Blessed One answered, saying, Enough, Ananda, do not entreat the Tathagata, for the time is past, Ananda, for such an entreaty. But for a second and third time, the Venerable Ananda said to the Blessed One, May the Blessed One remain, O Lord, may the Happy One remain, O Lord, throughout the world period, for the welfare and happiness of the multitude, out of compassion for the world, for the benefit, well-being, and happiness of gods and men. Then the Blessed One said, Do, do you have faith, Ananda, in the enlightenment of the Tathagata? And the Venerable Ananda replied, Yes, O Lord, I do. Then how, Ananda? Can you persist against the Tathagata even up to the third time? Then the Venerable Ananda said, This, O Lord, I have heard and learned from the Blessed One Himself. When the Blessed One said to me, Whosoever Ananda has developed, practiced, employed, strengthened, maintained, scrutinized, and brought to perfection the four constituents of psychic power could, if he so desired, remain throughout a world period or until the end of it. The Tathagat Ananda has done so. Therefore, the Tathagat could, if he so desired, remain throughout a world period or until the end of it. And did you believe it, Ananda? Yes, O Lord, I did. Then, Ananda, the fault is yours. Herein have you failed. In as much as you were unable to grasp the plain suggestion, the significant prompting given by the Tathagata, and you did not then entreat the Tathagata to remain. For if if, for if you ha had done so, Ananda, twice the Tathagat might have declined, but the third time he would have consented. Therefore, Ananda, the fault is yours. Herein have you failed. At Rajagaha, Ananda, when dwelling at Vulture's Peak, I spoke to you, saying, Pleasant Ananda is Rajagaha, pleasant is Vulture's Peak. Whosoever Ananda has developed, therefore the Tathagat could, if he so desired, remain throughout a world period or until the end of it. So also at the Banyan group, at Robert's Cliff, at the Satta Panni Cave, on the Vevhara mountain, at the Black Rock of Isigilli, 
एट द सर्पेन्ट्स पुल इन द कुल फोरेस्ट एट द तपोदा ग्रुप एट द बेम्बो ग्रुप इन द स्क्वायरल्स फिडिंग ग्राउंड एट जीवाकाज मैंगो ग्रुप एंड एट स्मॉल नूक इन द डियर पार्क आई स्पोक टू यू इन द सेम वर्ड सेंग प्रेजेंट आनंद इज राजगाह प्रेजेंट आर दिज प्लेसेस उसो इवर आनंद हेज डेवलप देर फोर द तथागत कोड इफ ही सो डिजायर्ड रिमेन थ्रू आउट अ वर्ल्ड पीरियड और अंटिल द इंड अफ इट बट यू आनंद वेर अनेबल टू ग्रैप द प्लेन सजेसन द सीग्निफिकेन्ट प्रोमटिंग गिवन बाय द तथागत एंड यू डी नट इंट्रीट द तथागता टू रिमेन फर इफ यू हेड डन सो आनंद ट्वाइस द तथागत माइट हेव डिक्लाइन बट द थर्ड टाइम ही वुड हेव कंसेंटेड देर फोर आनंद द फॉल्ट इज योर्स हियर इन यू हेव फेल्ड सो अल्सो एट बेसाली आनंद एट डिफ्रेंट टाइम्स द तथागत हेज स्पोकन टू यू सेंग प्लिजेंट आनंद इज बेसाली प्लिजेंट आर द श्राइन्स अफ उदेना गोतामा का सतम्बा का बाहुन बाहुपुत्त शरण दादा एंड सपला हुसो एवर आनंद हेज डेवलप्ड देर फोर द तथागत कुड इफ ही सो डिजायर्ड रिमेन थ्रू आउट अ वर्ल्ड पीरियड और अंटिल द इंड अफ इट बट यू आनंद वेर अनेबल टू ग्रैप द प्लेन सजेसन द सीग्निफिकेन्ट प्रोमटिंग गिवन यू बाई द तथागता एंड यू डी नट इंट्रीट द तथागता टू रिमेन फर इफ यू हेड डन सो आनंद ट्वाइस द तथागत माइट हेव डिक्लाइन बट द थर्ड टाइम ही वुड हेव कंसेंटेड देर फोर आनंद द फॉल्ट इज योर्स हियर इन यू हेव फेल्ड एट आनंद हेव आई नट टट फ्रम द भेरी बिगिनिंग दैट विथ अल दैट इज डियर एंड बिलव देयर मस्ट बी चेंज सेपरेशन एंड सीवेरेन्स अफ दैट हुईच इज बोर्न कम इन टू बिइंग इज कंपाउंडेड एंड सब्जेक्ट टू डिके हाउ कैन वन से मे इट मे इट नट कम टू डिसोल्यूसन देयर कैन बी नो सच स्टेट अफ थिंग्स एंड अफ दैट आनंद हुईज द तथागत हेज फिनीस्ड विथ दैट हुईज ही हेज रिलिन क्विस्ट गिवन अफ एबेन्डोन एंड रिजेक्टेड हिज विल टू लिव ऑन The Tathagat word, Tathagat's word, has been spoken once for all. Before long, the parinibbana of the Tathagat will come about. Three months hence, the Tathagat will utterly pass away, and that the Tathagat should withdraw his words for the sake of living on. This is an impossibility. The last admonition. So then, Ananda, let us go to the hall of the gabled house in the great forest. and the venerable ananda replied so be it lord then the blessed one with the venerable ananda went to the hall of the gabled house in the great forest and there he spoke to the venerable ananda saying go now ananda and assemble in the hall of audience all the bhikkhus who dwell in the neighborhood of vesali so be it lord and the venerable ananda gathered all the bhikkhus who dwelt in the neighborhood of vesali and assembled them in the hall of audience and then respectfully saluting the blessed one and standing at one side he said the community of bhikkhus is assembled o lord now let the blessed one do as he wishes there upon the blessed one entered the hall of audience and taking the seat prepared for him he exhorted the bhikkhus saying now o bhikkhus i say to you that these teachings of which i have direct knowledge and which i have made known to you these you should thoroughly learn cultivate develop and frequently practice that the life of purity may be established and may long endure for the welfare and happiness of the multitude out of compassion for the world for the benefit well being and happiness of gods and men and what vikus are these teachings they are the four foundations of mindfulness the four right uh, efforts the four constituent of psychic power the five faculties and <coughs> the five powers the seven factors of enlightenment and the noble eightfold path these bhikkhus are the teachings of which i have direct knowledge which i have made known to you and which you should thoroughly learn cultivate develop and frequently practice that the life of purity may be established and may long endure by for the welfare and happiness of the multitude out of compassion for the world for for the benefit well being and happiness of gods and men Then the blessed one says to the bhikkhus so bhikkhus i exhort you all compounded things are subject to vanish strive with earnestness the time of the tathagat parinibbana is near three month hence the tathagat will utterly pass away and having spoken these words the happy one the master spoke uh, again saying 
my years are now full ripe the life span left is short departing i go hence from you relying on myself alone be earnest then o bhikkhus be mindful and of virtue pure with firm resolve guard your one mind who so untiringly pursues the dhamma and the discipline shall go beyond the round of wars and make an end of suffering part 4 the last meal the elephant's loop then the blessed one getting ready in the forenoon took bowl and robe and went into vesali for arms after the arms round and meal on his return he looked upon vesali with the elephant's loop and said to the venerable ananda this ananda is the last time that the tathagat will look upon vesali come ananda let us go to the let us go to bandagama so be it o lord and the blessed one took up his abode at bandagama together with a large community of bhikkhus and the bhikkhus and the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus saying bhikkhus it is through not realizing through not penetrating four principles that this long course of birth and death has been passed through and undergone by me as well as by you what are these those four they are noble virtue noble concentration noble wisdom and noble emancipation but now bhikkhus that these have been realized and penetrated cut off is the craving for existence destroyed is that which leads to renowned becoming and there is no fresh becoming and having spoken these words the happy one the master spoke again saying virtue concentration wisdom and emancipation unsurpassed these are the principles realized by the by gotama the renowned and knowing them he the buddha to his monks has taught the dhamma he the destroyer of suffering the master the seer is at peace and also at bhandagama the blessed one often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus such and such is virtue such and such is concentration and such and such is wisdom great becomes the fruit great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct great becomes the fruit great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration utterly freed from the taints of lost becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom when the blessed one had stayed at bandagama as long as he pleased he spoke to the venerable ananda come ananda let us go to hatigama so be it lord and the blessed one took up his abode at hatigama together with a large community of bhikkhus and when the blessed one had stayed at hatigama as long as he pleased he took up his abode at ambagama then at jambu <coughs> jambugama and at each of these places the blessed one often gave counsel to the bhikkhus thus such and such is virtue such and such is concentration and such and such is wisdom great becomes the fruit great is the gain of concentration when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct great becomes the fruit great is the gain of wisdom when it is fully developed by concentration utterly freed from the taints of lost becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom and the way <coughs> and when the blessed one had stayed at jambugama as long as he pleased he spoke to the venerable ananda come ananda let us go to bhoj bhoga nagara so be it lord and the blessed one took up his abode at bhoga nagara together with a large community of monks bhikkhus and stayed in the ananda shrine the four great references and there the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus saying now bhikkhus i shall make known to you the four great references listen and pay heed to my words and those bhikkhus answered saying so be it lord then the blessed one said in this fashion bhikkhus a bhikkhu might speak face to face with the blessed one brethren i have heard and learned thus this is the dhamma and the disip- discipline the master's dispensation or in an abode of such and such a name lives a community with elders and a chief face to face with that community i have heard and learned thus this is the dhamma and the discipline the master's dispensation or in an abode of such and such a name live several bhikkhus who are elders who are learned who have accomplished their course who are preservers of dhamma the discipline and the summaries face to face with those elders i have heard and learned thus this is the dhamma and the discipline the master dispensation or in an abode of such and such a name lives a single bhikkhu who is an elder who is learned who has accomplished his course who is a preserver of the dhamma 
the discipline and the summaries face to face with that elder I have heard and learned thus. This is the Dhamma and the discipline the master dispensation. In such a case, because the declaration of such a bhikkhu is neither to be received with approval nor with scorn. Without approval and without scorn, but carefully studying the sentences word by word, one should trace them in the discourses and verify them by the discipline. If they are neither traceable in the discourses nor verifiable by the discipline, one must conduct thus. Certainly this is not the blessed one's uh, utterance. This has been misunderstood by that bhikkhu or by that community, or by the, those elders, or by that elder. In that way, because you should reject it. But if the sentences concerned are traceable <coughs> in the discourses and verifiable by the discipline, then one must conclude thus, certainly this is the blessed one's utterance. Ut ut utterance. This has been well understood by that bhikkhu, or by that community, or by those elders, or by that elder. And in that way, because you may accept it on the first, second, third, or fourth reference, these because are the four great references for you to preserve. And also at Bhoganagara, at the Ananda Shrine, the Blessed One often gave counsel to the bhikkhu, because thus, such and such is virtue, such and such is concentration, and such and such is wisdom. Great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of concentration, when it is fully developed by virtuous conduct, great becomes the fruit, great is the gain of wisdom, when it is fully developed by concentration, utterly freed from the taints of lust, becoming and ignorance is the mind that is fully developed in wisdom. When the Blessed One had stayed at Bhoganagara as long as he pleased, he spoke to the Vendable Ananda, saying, Come Ananda, let us go to Pava. So be it, Lord, and the Blessed One took up his abode at Pava together with a great community of bhikkhus and stayed in the mango grove of Sunda, who was by family of family a metal worker. <coughs> the Buddha's last meal And Sunda, the metal worker, came to know the Blessed One, they say, has arrived at Pava and is staying in my mango grove. And he went to the Blessed One, and having respectfully greeted him, sat down at one side, and the Blessed One instructed Chunda, the metal worker in the Dhamma, and roused, edified, and glad in him. Then Chunda spoke to the Blessed One, saying, May the Blessed One, O Lord, please accept my invitation for tomorrow's meal, together with the community of Ikkus. And by his silence, the Blessed One consented. Sure then of the Blessed One's consent, Sunda, the metal worker, rose from his seat, respectfully saluted the Blessed One, and keeping his right side towards him, took his departure. And Sunda, the, <coughs> Sunda, the metal worker, after the night had passed, had twice food, hard and soft, prepared in his abode, together with a quantity of su Sukara Madda Maddava, and announced it to the Blessed One, saying, It is time, O Lord, the meal is ready. Thereupon the Blessed One in the forenoon, having got ready, took bowl and robe and went to th with the community of bhikkhus to the hout of Sunda and there sat down on the seat prepared for him. And he spoke to Sunda, Sunda saying, With the Sukara Maddava you have prepared, Sunda, you may serve me. With the other food, hard and soft, you may serve the community of bhikkhus. So be it, Lord. And with the Sukara Maddava prepared by him, he served the Blessed One. And with the other food, hard and soft, he served the community of Ikkus. Thereafter, the Blessed One spoke to Chunda, saying, Whatever Chunda is left over of the Sukara Madhava, bury that in a pit. For I do not see in all this world with its gods, Maras, and Brahmans, Brahmas, among the host of ascetics and Brahmans, gods and men, anyone who could eat it and entirely digest it except the Tathagat alone. And Chunda, the metal worker, answered the Blessed One, saying, So be it, O Lord, and what remained over of the Sukara Maddava, he buried in a pit. Then he returned to the Blessed One, respectfully greeted him, and sat down at one side. And the Blessed One instructed Chunda, the metal worker, in the Dhamma, and roused, edified, and gladdened him. After this, he rose, he rose from his seat and depart, departed. And soon after the Blessed One had eaten the meal provided by Chunda, the metal worker, a dire sickness fell upon him, even dysentery, and he suffered sharp and deadly pains. But the Blessed One endured them mindfully, clearly comprehending and un 
unperturbed. Then the Blessed One spoke to the Venerable Ananda saying, Come Ananda, let us go to Kushinara. And the Venerable Ananda answered, So be it, Lord. When he had eaten Sundar's food, I heard with fortitude the deadly pain she bore from, from the Sukara Madhava Asur and dreadful sickness came upon the Lord. But nature's pangs he endured, come let us go to Kushinara, was his dauntless word. The Clearing of the Waters Now on the way the Blessed One went aside from the highway and stopped at the foot of a tree. And he said to the Venerable Ananda, Please fold my upper robe in four, Ananda, and lay it down. I am weary and want to rest a while. So be it, Lord. And the Venerable Ananda folded the robe in four and laid it down. And the Blessed One sat down on the seat prepared for him and said to Venerable Ananda, Please bring me some water, Ananda. I am thirsty and want to drink. And the Venerable Ananda answered the Blessed One, But, but just now, Lord, a great number of cards, 500 cards, have passed over and the shallow water has been caught through by the wheels so that it flows torvid and muddy. But the Kakutha river, Lord, it quite close by, and its waters are clear, pleasant, cool, and translucent. It is easily approachable and delightfully placed. There the Blessed One can quench his thirst and refresh his limbs. But a second time the Blessed One made his request, and the Venerable Ananda answered him as before. And then for a third time the Blessed One said, Please bring me some water, Ananda, I am thirsty and want to drink. Then the Venerable Ananda answered, saying, So be it, Lord. And he took the bowl and went to the stream. And the shallow water which uh, had been caught through by the wheels so that it flowed torvid and muddy became clear and settled down pure and pleasant as the Venerable Ananda drew near. Then the Venerable Ananda thought, Marvelous and most wonderful indeed is the power and glory of the Tathagata. And he took up water in the bowl and carried it to the Blessed One and said, Marvelous and most wonderful indeed is the power and glory of the Tathagata. For this shallow water which had been caught through by the wheels so that it flowed torvid and muddy became clear and settled down, pure and pleasant as I drew near. Now let us, now let the Blessed One drink the water, let the happy one drink, and the Blessed, blessed One drink the water. Pukusa the Malla. Now it so happened that one Pukusa of the Malla clan, who was a disciple of Alara Kalama, was passing by on his way from Kusinara to Pava. And when he saw the Blessed One seated at the front of a tree, he approached him, respectfully greeted him, and sat down at one side. And he spoke to the Blessed One, saying, Marvelous it is, Lord, most wonderful it is, O Lord. The state of calmness wherein avoid those who have gone forth from the world. For at one time Lord Alara Kalama was on a journey, and he went aside from the highway and sat down by the wayside at the foot of a tree to pass the heat of the day. And it came about, Lord, that a great number of cards, even five hundred cards, passed by him one by one, and then, Lord, a certain man who was following behind that train of cards approached and spoke to him, saying, did you, sir, see a great number of cards that passed by you by? And Alara Kalama answered him, I do not see them, brother, but the noise, sir, surely you heard. I did not hear it, brother. Then that man asked him, Then, sir, then, sir perhaps you slept. No, brother, I was not sleeping. Then, sir, were you conscious? I was, brother, then that man said. Then, sir, while conscious and awake, you still did not see the great number of cards, even five hundred cards that passed you by one after another, nor heard the noise. Why, sir, you, your very robe is covered with their dust? And Alara Kalama replied, saying, So it is, brother. And to that man, O Lord, came the thought, Marvelous it is, most wonderful indeed. It is the state of calmness wherein abide those who have gone forth from the world, and there arose in him great faith in Alara Kalama, and he went his way. Now, what do you think, Pukusa? What is more difficult to do, more difficult to meet with, that a man with conscious and awake should not see a great number of cards, even five hundred cards, that passed him by one after another, nor hear the noise, or that one conscious and awake 
in the midst of a heavy rain with thunder rolling lightning flashing and thunderbolts crashing should neither see it nor hear the noise what o lord are 500 cars ne 6 7 8 900 or a thousand or even hundreds of thousands of cars compared with this now one time pukusa i was staying at atuma and had my abode in a barn there and at that time there was a heavy rain with thunder rolling lightning flashing and thunderbolts crashing and two farmers who were brothers were killed close to the barn together with four oxen and great crowd came forth from atuma to the spot where they were killed now at that time pukusa i had come out of the barn and was walking up and down in thought before the door door and a certain man from the great crowd approached me respectfully greeted me and stood at one side and i asked him why brother has this great crowd gathered together and he answered me just now lord there was a heavy rain with thunder rolling lightning flashing and thunderbolt crashing and two farmers who were brothers were killed close by together with four oxen it is because of this that the great crowd has gathered but where lord were you i was here brother yet lord did you not see it i did not see it brother but the noise lord you surely surely heard i did not hear it brother then that man asked me then lord perhaps you slept no brother i was not sleeping then lord you were conscious i was brother then that man said then lord while conscious and awake in the midst of a heavy rain with thunder rolling lightning flashing and thunderbolts crashing you neither saw it nor heard the noise and i answered him saying i did not brother and to that man pukusa came the thought marvelous it is most wonderful it is the state of calmness wherein abide those who have gone forth from the world and there arose in him great faith in me and he respectfully saluted me and keeping his right side towards me he went his way when this had been said pukusa of the malla clan said to the blessed one the faith lord that i had in alara kalama i now scattered to the mighty wind i let it be carried away as by a flowing stream excellent o lord most excellent o lord it is as if lord one way to set upright what had been overthrown or to reveal what had been hidden or to show the path to one who had gone astray or to light a lamp in the dark darkness so that those having eyes might see even so has the blessed one set forth the dhamma in many ways and so o lord i take my refuge in the blessed one the dhamma and the community of bhikkhus may the blessed one accept me as his disciple one who has taken refuge until the end of life then pukusa of the malla clan spoke to the to a certain man saying bring me at once friend two sets of golden hued robes burnished and ready for wear and the man answered him so it be sir and when the robes were brought pukusa of the malla clan offered them to the blessed one saying may the blessed one o lord out of compassion accept this from me and the blessed one said robe me then in one pukusa and in the other robe ananda so be it lord and he thereupon robed the blessed one in one and <coughs> in the other he robed the venerable ananda and then the blessed one instructed pukusa of the malla clan in the dhamma and roused edified and gladdened him and after that pukusa rose from his seat respectfully saluted the blessed one and keeping his right side towards him went his way and soon after pukusa of the malla clan had departed the venerable ananda arranged the set of golden hued robes burnished and ready for wear about the body of the blessed one but when the set of robes was arranged upon the body of the blessed one it became as though faded and its splendor dimmed and the venerable ananda said to the blessed one marvelous it is o lord most wonderful it is indeed it is how clear and radiant the skin of the tathagat appears this set of golden hued robes burnished and ready for wear lord now that it is arranged upon the body of the blessed one seems to have become faded its splendor dimmed 
इट इज सो आनंद देर आर टू ओकेजन्स आनंद व्हेन द स्किन अफ द तथागत एपियर्स एक्सीडिंगली क्लियर एंड रेडियंट व्हिच आर दिस टू द नाइट आनंद व्हेन द तथागत बिकम्स फुल्ली इनलाइटेन इन अनसरप्राइज सुप्रीम इनलाइटेनमेंट एंड द नाइट व्हेन द तथागत कम्स टू हिज फाइनल पासिंग अवे द स्टेट अफ निब्बाना इन व्हिच नो इलिमेंट अफ क्लिंगिंग रिमेन्स दिज आनंद आर द टू ओकेजन्स अन व्हिच वन द स्किन अफ द तथागत एपियर्स एक्सीडिंगली क्लियर एंड रेडियंट and now today in the last watch of this very night anand in the mallas sala grove in the vicinity of kusinara between the two sala trees the tathagat will come to his parinibbana so now anand let us go to the kakutha river clad in pukusaj gift the ropes of gold master's form was radiant to behold at the kukutha river then the blessed one went to the kukutha river together with a great community of bhikkhus and he went down into the water and bathed and drank and coming forth from the water again he went to the mango grove and there he spoke to the vendebal chundaka saying please fold my upper robe in four chundaka and lay it down i am weary and would rest a while so be it lord and chundaka followed the folded the robe in four and laid it down and the blessed one lay down on his right side in the lion's posture resting one foot upon the other and so disposed himself mindfully and clearly comprehending with the time for rising hell in mind and the venerable chundaka sat down right in the uh, in front of the blessed one the buddha to kakutha river came where cool and limpid flows the pleasant stream there washed in water clear his weary frame the buddha he in all the world supreme and having bath and drank the teacher straight crossed over the bhikkhus thronging in his awake in his wake discoursing holy truth the master great towards the mango grove his path did take there to the elder chundaka the, he spoke lay down my robe please folded into four then the elder swift as lightning stroke hastened the teacher's biding to obey way <coughs> Weary the Lord then lay down on the mat and chunda on the ground before his him sat. Relieving chunda's remorse, then the blessed one spoke to the venerable Ananda, saying, "It may, it may come to pass, Ananda, that someone will cause remorse to chunda, the metal worker, saying." It is no gain to you, friend Sunda, but a loss that it was from you that Tathagat took his last arms meal, and then came to his end. Then Ananda, the remorse of Sunda, should be dispelled after this manner. It is a gain to you, friend Sunda, the blessing that the Tathagat took his last arms meal from you, and then came to his end. For friend, face to face with the blessed one, I have heard and learned. There are two offerings of food which are of equal fruition, of equal outcome, exceeding in grandeur the fruition and result of any other offerings of the food of food, which do, the one partaken of by the tathagata before becoming fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment, and the one partaken of by the tathagata before passing into the state of nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. by his deed the worthy chunda has accumulated merit which makes for long life beauty well being glory heavenly rewards and sovereignty thus ananda the remorse of chunda the metal worker should be dispelled then the blessed one understanding that matter breath for the solemn utterance who gives his virtue shall increase who is self carved no hatter bears who so is skill in virtue evil sons and by the rooting out of lust and hate and all delusion comes to be at peace part 5 at kusinara last place of rest then the blessed one addressed the venerable ananda saying come ananda let us cross to the farther bank of hiranyavati and go to the mallas sala grove in the vicinity of kusinara so be it lord 
and the blessed one together with a large company of bhikkhus went to the further bank of the river Hiranyavati to the sala grove of the mallas in the vicinity of Kusinara and there he spoke to the venerable Ananda saying Please Ananda prepare for me a couch between the twin sala trees with the head to the north I am weary Ananda and want to lie down so be it lord and the venerable Ananda did as the blessed one asked him to do Then the blessed one lay down on his right side in the lion's posture resting resting one foot upon the other and so disposed himself mindfully and clearly comprehending At that time the twin sala trees broke out in full bloom though it was not the season of flowering and the blossoms rained upon the body of the tathagata and dropped and scattered and were strewn upon it in worship of the tathagata and celestial mandaraba flowers and heavenly sandalwood powder from the sky rained down upon the body of the tathagata and dropped and scattered and were strewn upon it in worship of the tathagata and the sound of heavenly heavenly voices and heavenly instruments made music in the air out of reverence for the tathagata and the blessed one spoke to the venerable ananda saying ananda the twin sala trees are in full bloom though it is not the season of flowering and the blossoms rain upon the body of the tathagata and drop and scatter and are strewn upon it in worship of the tathagata and the and celestial coral flowers and heavenly sandalwood powder from the sky rain down upon the body of the tathagata and drop the, and scatter and are strewn upon it in worship of the tathagata and the sound of heavenly voices and heavenly instruments makes music in the air out of reverence for the tathagata yet it is not thus ananda that the tathagata is respected venerated esteemed worshiped and honored in the highest degree but ananda whatever bhikkhu or bhikkhuni layman or lay women abides by the dhamma lives uprightly in the dhamma walks in the way of the dhamma it is by such a one that the tathagat is respected venerated esteemed worshiped and honored in the highest degree therefore ananda thus should you train yourself i say we shall abide by the dhamma live uprightly in the dhamma walk in the way of the dhamma the grief of the gods at that time the venerable upavana was standing before the blessed one fanning him and the blessed one rebuked him saying move aside bhikkhu do not stand in front of me and to the venerable ananda came the thought this venerable upavana has been in attendance on the blessed one for a long time closely associating with him and serving him yet now right at the end the blessed one rebukes him what now could be the reason what the cause for the blessed one to rebuke the venerable upavana saying move aside bhikkhu do not stand in front of me and the venerable ananda told his thought to the blessed one the blessed one said throughout the tenfold world system ananda there are hardly any of the deities that have not gathered together to look upon the tathagata for a distance of 12 yojanas around the sala grove of the mallas in the vicinity of kusinara there is not a spot that could be pricked with a tip of a hair that is not filled with the powerful deities and these deities ananda are complaining from afar have we come to look upon the tathagata for here in the world is the arising of the of tathagatas or hunts fully enlightened ones and this day in the last watch of the night the tathagatas parinibbana will come out but this bhikkhu of great powers has placed himself right in front of the blessed one concealing him so that now at the very end we are prevented from looking upon him thus ananda the deities complain of what kinds of deities lord is the blessed one aware there are deities ananda in space and on earth who are earthly minded with disabled here they weep with uplifted arms they weep flinging themselves on the ground they roll from side to side lamenting too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana too soon has the happy one come to the come, come to his parinibbana too soon will the eye of the world vanish from sight but those deities who are freed from passion mindful and comprehending reflect in this way impermanent are all compounded things how could this be otherwise ananda's concern 
formerly lord on leaving their quarters after the rains the bhikkhus would set forth to see the tathagat and to see to us there was the gain and benefit of receiving and associating with those very reverend bhikkhus who came to have audience with the blessed one and to wait upon him but lord after the blessed one has gone we shall no longer have that gain and benefit four places of pilgrimage <coughs> There are four places Ananda that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. What are the four? Here the Tathagata was born. This Ananda is the is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here the Tathagata became fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. This Ananda is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here the Tathagata set rolling the unexcelled wheel of the Dhamma. This Ananda is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. Here the Tathagata passed away into the state of Nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. This Ananda is a place that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. These Ananda are the four places that a pious person should visit and look upon with feelings of reverence. And truly, there will come to these places Ananda, pious and pious bhikkhus and bhikkhunis, laymen and laywomen, reflecting here the Tathagat was born. <coughs> here the Tathagat became fully enlightened in unsurpassed supreme enlightenment. Here the Tathagat set rolling in the unexcelled wheel of the Dhamma. Here the Tathagat passed away into the state of Nibbana in which no element of clinging remains. And whoever Ananda should die on, a, on such a pilgrimage with his heart established in faith at the breaking of, of the body after death will be reborn in, the, in a realm of heavenly happiness. Then the Venerable Ananda said to the Blessed One, How, Lord, should we conduct ourselves towards women? Do not see them, Ananda. But, Lord, if we do see them, do not speak Ananda, but Lord, if they should speak to us, then Ananda, you should establish mindfulness. Then the Venerable Ananda said, How should we act, Lord, respecting the body of the Tathagata? Do not hinder yourself, Ananda, to honor the body of the Tathagata. Rather, you should strive, Ananda, and be jealous, <coughs> jealous on, the, on your own behalf. For your own good, unflinchingly, ardently, and resolutely, you should apply yourself to your own good. For there are Ananda, wise nobles, wise Brahmans, and wise householders who are devoted to the Tathagata, and it is they who will render the honor to the body of Tathagata. Then the Venerable Ananda said, But how, Lord, should they act respecting the body of the Tathagata? After the same manner, Ananda is towards the body of the universal monarch. But how, Lord, do they act respecting the body of a universal monarch? The body of a universal monarch, Ananda, is first wrapped round with new linen and then with teased cotton wool, and so it is done up to 500 la layers of linen and 500 of cotton wool. When that is done, the body of universal monarch is placed in an iron oil vessel and is enclosed in another iron vessel, a funeral pyre is built of all kinds of perfumed woods, and so the body of the universal monarch is born, and at a crossroads a stupa is raised for the universal monarch, so it is done Ananda with the body of a universal monarch, and even Ananda as with the body of a universal monarch, so should it be done with the body of the Tathagata and a crossroads. Also, a stupa should be raised for the Tathagata, and whosoever shall bring to that place garlands or incense or sandal paste or pay reverence, and to whose mind becomes calm there, it will be to his well-being and happiness for a long time. There are four persons, Ananda, who are worthy of a stupa. Who are these four, those four? A Tathagata, an Arahant, a fully enlightened one, is worthy of a stupa. So also is a Pachyaka Buddha and a disciple of a Tathagata and a universal monarch.
एन वाई आनंद इज अ तथागत एन अरहंत अ फुल्ली इनलाइटेन वन वर्दी अफ स्तूपा बिकज आनंद एट द थर्ड दिस इज द स्तूपा अफ दैट ब्लेसड वन अरहंत फुल्ली इनलाइटेन वन द हर्ट्स अफ मेनी पीपुल विल बी कामड एंड मेड हेप्पी एन सो कामड एंड विथ दियर माइंड इस्टाब्लिश इन फेथ दियर इन एट द ब्रेकिंग अफ द बडी आफ्टर डेथ दे विल बी रिबोर्न इन अ रियाम अफ हेपनली हेपीनेस एंड सो अल्सो एट द थर्ड दिस इज द स्तूपा अफ दैट पच्ची का बुद्ध और दिस इज द स्तूपा अफ अ डिशिपल अफ दैट प तथागत अरहंत फुल इनलाइट एंड वन एंड दिस इज द स्तूपा अफ दैट राइटियस मोनार्क हू रूल एकोर्डिंग टू द धम्म द हर्ट्स अफ मेनी पीपुल आर कामड एंड मेड हेपी एंड सो कामड एंड विथ दियर माइंड इस्टाब्लिश इन फेथ देयर इन एट द ब्रेकिंग अप अफ द बडी आफ्टर डेथ दे विल बी रिबोर्न इन अ रियाम अफ हेवनली हेपीनेस एंड इट इज बिकज अफ दिस आनंद दैट दिज फोर पर्सन्स आर वर्ड दि अफ स्तूपा Ananda's grief. Then the venerable Ananda went into the vihara and leaned against the doorpost and wept. I am still but a learner and still have to strive for my own perfection. But alas, my master, who was so compassionate towards me, is about to pass away. And the blessed one spoke to the bhikkhu, saying, "Where bhikkhu is Ananda? The venerable Ananda Lord has gone into the vihara." and there he stands leaning against the door post and weeping i am still but a learner and still have to strive for my own perfection but alas my master who was so compassionate towards me is about to pass away then the blessed one asked a certain bhikkhu to bring the venerable ananda to him saying go bhikkhu and say to ananda friend ananda the master calls you so be it lord and that bhikkhu went and spoke to the venerable ananda as the blessed one had asked him to and the venerable ananda went to the blessed one bowed down to him and sat down on one side then the blessed one spoke to venerable ananda saying enough ananda do not grieve do not lament for have i not taught from the very beginning that with all that is dear and beloved there must be change separation and severance of that which is born come to into being compounded and subject to decay how can one say may it not come to dissolution there can be no such state of things now for a long time ananda you have served the tathagata with loving kindness in deed word and thought graciously pleasantly with a whole heart and beyond measure great good have you gathered ananda now you should put forth energy and soon you too will be free from the tents praise of ananda then the blessed one addressed the bhikkhu saying bhikkhu the blessed ones arahants fully enlightened ones of times past also had excellent and devoted attendant bhikkhu such as i have in ananda and so also bhikkhu will the blessed one arahants fully enlightened ones of times to come capable and <coughs> judicious is ananda bhikkhu for he knows the proper time for bhikkhu to have audience with the tathagata and the time for bhikkhunis the time for laymen and for lay women the time for kings and for ministers of state the time for teachers of other sects and for their followers in ananda bhikkhus are to be found four rare and superlative qualities what are the four if bhikkhus a company of bhikkhus should go to see ananda they become joyful on seeing him and if he then speaks to them of the dhamma they are made joyful by his discourse and when he become silent they are disappointed so it is also when bhikkhunis laymen or lay women go to see ananda they become joyful on seeing him and if he then speaks to them of the dhamma they are made joyful by his discourse and when he become silent they are disappoint disappointed in a universal monarch bhikkhus are to be found four rare and superlative qualities what are those four if bhikkhus a company of nobles should go to see the universal monarch they become joyful on seeing him and if he then speaks they are made joyful by his talk and when he become silent they are disappointed so it is also when a company of brahmans of householders or of ascetics goes to see a universal monarch 
and in just the same way because in ananda are to be found these four rare and superlative qualities the past glory of kushinara when this has uh, this had been said the venerable ananda spoke to the blessed one saying let it not be lord that the blessed one should pass away in he, in this mean place this uncivilized township in the midst of the jungle a mere outpost of the province there are great cities lord such as champa rajgah savatthi saketa kosambi and banaras let the blessed one have his final passing away in one of those for in those cities dwell many wealthy nobles and brahmans and householders who are devotees of the tathagata and they will render due honor to the remains of the tathagata do not say that ananda do not say this mean place this uncivilized township in the midst of the jungle a mere outpost of the province in times long past ananda there was a king by the name of mahasuddhasana who was a universal monarch or a king of righteousness a conqueror of the four quarters of the earth whose realm was established in security and who was endowed with seven with the seven jewels and that king mahasuddhasana ananda had his loyal residence here at kushinara which was then called kusavati and it extended to well yojanas from east to west east to west and seven from north to south and mighty ananda was kusavati the capital prosperous and well populated much frequented by lay people and abundantly provided with food just at the royal residence of the deities Alaka Manda is mighty prosperous and well populated much frequented by deities and abundantly provided with food so was the royal capital of Kusavati Kusavati Ananda resounded unceasingly day and night with tenth sounds the trumpeting of elephants the neighing of horses the rattling of chariots the beating of drums and tabors music and song cheers the clapping of hands and cries of eat drink and be merry lamentation of the mallas go now ananda to kushinara and announce to the mallas today basettas in the last watch of the night the tathagatas parinibbana will take place approach o baset basettas draw near do not be remorseful later at the thought in our township it was that the tathagatas parinibbana took place but we failed to see him at the end so be it lord at the end the venerable ananda prepared himself and taking bowl and robe went in with a companion to kushinara now at that time the mallas had gathered in the council hall for some public business and the venerable ananda approached them and announced today bhasettas in the last watch of the night the tathagata parinibbana will take place approach bhasettas draw near do not be remorseful later at the thought Uh, in our town in town if it was that the tathagat parinibbana took place but we failed to see him at the inn when they heard the venerable ananda speak these words the mallas with their sons their wives and the wives of their sons were sorely grieved grieved at heart and afflicted and so with their hair all disheveled with arms afflicted in despair wept flinging themselves on the ground they rolled from side to side lamenting too soon too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana too soon has the happy one come to his parinibbana too soon will the eye of the world vanish from the sight and thus afflicted and filled with grief the mallas with their sons their wives and the wives of their sons
when they heard the venerable Anand speak these words, the Mallas with their sons, their wives, and the wives of their sons were sorely grieved, grieved at heart, and afflicted, and so with their hair all disabled, with arms uplifted in despair, waved, flinging themsel themselves on the ground. They rolled from side to side, lamenting, Too soon has the Blessed One come to His Parinibbana. Too soon has the Happy One come to His Parinibbana. Too soon will the eye of the world vanish from sight. And thus afflicted and filled with grief, the Mallas with their sons, their wives, and the wives of their sons, went to the Sala grove, the cre creation park of the Mallas, to the place where the Vendable Ananda was. And the thought arose in the Venerable Ananda, If I were to allow the Mallas of Kushinara to pay reverence to the Blessed One, one by one, the night will have given place to dawn before they are all presented to Him. Therefore let me divide them up according to clan, each family in a group, and so present them to the Blessed One thus. The Malla of such and such a name, Lord, with His wives and children, his attendants and his friends pay pays homage at the feet of the Blessed One. And the Venerable Ananda divided the Mallas up according to clan, each family in a group, and presented them to the Blessed One. So it was that the Venerable Ananda caused the Mallas of Kusinara to be presented to the Blessed One by, uh, by clans, each family in a group, even in the first watch of the night, the last convert. Now at that time a wandering ascetic named Subhadda was dwelling at Kushinara, and Subhadda the wandering ascetic heard it said, Today in the third watch of the night the Parinibbana of the ascetic Gotama will take place. And the thought arose in him, I have heard it said by old and venerable wandering ascetics, teachers of teachers, that the arising of Tathagata's Arahants, fully enlightened ones, is rare in the world. At this very day, in the last day, watch of the night, the Parinibbana of the ascetic Gotama will take place. Now there is in me a doubt, doubt, but to this extent I have faith in the ascetic Gotama that he could so teach me the Dhamma as to remove that doubt. Then the wandering ascetic Subhadda went to the Sala group, the recreation park of the Mallas, and drew near to the Venerable Ananda, and told the Venerable Ananda his thought. And he spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, Friend Ananda, it would be good if I could be allowed into the presence of ascetic Gotama. But the Venerable Ananda answered him, saying, Enough, friend Subhadda, do not trouble the Tathagata. The Blessed One is weary. At the second and third time, the wandering ascetic Subhadda made his request, and a second and third time, the Venerable Ananda refused him. And the Blessed One heard the talk between them, and he called the Venerable Ananda and said, Stop, Ananda, do not refuse Subhadda. Subhadda, Ananda, may be the allowed into the presence of the Tathagat. For whatever he will ask me, he will ask for the sake of knowledge, and not as an offense. And the answer I give him that he will be readily understand. That he will readily understand. Therefore, thereupon the Venerable Ananda said to the wandering ascetic Subhadda, Go then, friend Subhadda, the Blessed One gives you leave. Then the wandering ascetic Subhadda approached the Blessed One and saluted him courteously. And having exchanged with him pleasant and civil greetings, the wandering ascetic Subhadda seated himself at one side and addressed the Blessed One, saying, There are venerable Gautam ascetics and Brahmans who are heads of great companies of disciples, who have large retinues, who are leaders of schools, well known and renowned and held in high esteem by the multitude, such as such teachers as Purana Kassapa, Makkhali Gosala, Ajit Kesam, Kesa Kambali, Pakudha Katsayana, Sanjaya Belaputta, Nigantha Nataputta, have all of these attained realization as each of them would have it believed or has none of them, or it is that some have attained realization and others not. Enough Subhadda, let it be as it may. Whether all of them have attained realization as, as each of them would have it believed or whether none of them has or whether some have attained realization and others not. I will teach you the Dhamma, Subhadda, listen and heed it well and I will speak. 
so be it lord the lions roar and the blessed one spoke saying in whatsoever dhamma and discipline subhadda there is not found the noble eightfold path neither is there found a true ascetic of the first second third or fourth degree of saintliness but in whatsoever dhamma and discipline there is found the noble eightfold path there is found a true ascetic of the first second third and fourth degrees of saintliness now in this dhamma and discipline subhadda is found the noble eightfold path and in it alone are also found true ascetic of the first second third and fourth degrees of saintliness devoid of true ascetics are the systems of other teachers but if subhadda the bhikkhus live righteously the world will not be destitute of arahants in his but 29 was i subhadda when i renounced the world to seek the good 51 years have passed since then subhadda and in all that the time a wanderer have i been in the domain of virtue and of truth and except therein there is no saint of the first degree and there is none of the second degree nor of the third degree nor of the fourth degree of saintliness Devoid of true ascetics are the systems of other teachers. But if Subhadda the Bhikkhus live righteously, the world will not be destitute of arahats. When when this was said, the wandering ascetic Subhadda spoke to the Blessed One, saying, "Excellent, O Lord, most excellent, O Lord. It is as if, Lord, one way to set up upright what had been overthrown, or to reveal what what had been hidden, or to show the path to one who had gone astray." or to light a lamp in the darkness so that those with eyes might see even so has the blessed one set forth the dhamma in many ways and so o lord i take my refuge in the blessed one the dhamma and the communities of bhikkhus may i receive from the blessed one admission to the order and also the higher ordination whoever subhadda having been formerly a follower of another creed wishes to receive admission and higher ordination in this dhamma and discipline remains on probation for a period of 4 months at the end of those 4 months if the bhikkhu are satisfied with him they, they grant him admission and higher ordination as a bhikkhu yet in this matter i recognize differences of personalities if o lord whoever having been formerly a follower of another creed wishes to receive admission and higher ordination in this dhamma and discipline remains on a probation for a period of 4 months and at the end of those 4 months if the bhikkhus are satisfied with him they grant him admission and higher ordination as a bhikkhu then i will remain on probation for a period of 4 years and at the end of those 4 years if the bhikkhus are satisfied with him with me let them grant me admission and higher ordination as a bhikkhu but the blessed one called the venerable ananda and said to him ananda let subhadda be given admission into the order and the venerable ananda replied so be it lord <coughs> then the wandering ascetic subhadda said to the venerable ananda it is a gain to you friend ananda a blessing that in the presence of master himself you have received the sprinkling of ordination as a disciple so it came about that the wandering ascetic subhadda in the presence of the blessed one received admission and higher ordination and from the time of his ordination the venerable subhadda remained alone secluded heedful ardent and resolute and before long he attained to the goal for which a worthy man goes forth rightly from home into homelessness the supreme goal of holy life and having by himself realized it with higher knowledge he dwelt he therein he knew destroyed his worth the higher life is fulfilled nothing more is to be done and beyond this life nothing more remains and the venerable subhadda became eight another among the arahats and he was the last disciple converted by the blessed one himself the passing away the blessed one's final ex- exhortations exhortation now the blessed one spoke to the venerable ananda saying it may be ananda that to some among you the thought will occur indeed is the word of the master we have a master no longer but it should not ananda be so considered for that which i have proclaimed and made 
known as the Dhamma and the discipline that shall be your master when I am gone. And Ananda, where is now the bhikkhus address one another as friend? Let it not be so when I am gone. The senior bhikkhus Ananda may address the junior ones by their name, their family name or as a friend. But the junior bhikkhus should address the senior ones as venerable sir or your reverend. If it is desired Ananda, the Sangha may, when I am gone, abolish the lesser or and minor rules. And uh, <coughs> Ananda, when I am gone, let the higher penalty be imposed upon the bhikkhu channa. But what, Lord, is the higher penalty? The bhikkhu channa ananda may say what he will, but the bhikkhu should neither converse with him, nor exhort him, nor admonish him. Then the blessed one addresses the bhikkhu saying, It may be bhikkhu that one of you is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma or the Sangha, the path or the practice. Then question bhikkhu, do not be given to remorse later on with the thought, the master was with face to face, yet face to face we failed to ask him. But to <coughs> But when this was said, the bhikkhus were silent, and at a second and third time, the blessed one said to them, It may be bhikkhus that one of you is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path or the practice, then question bhikkhus, do not be given to remorse later on with the thought, the master was with us face to face, at face to face we failed to ask him. And for a second and a third time, the bhikkhus were silent. Then the Blessed One said to them, It may be bhikkhus out of respect for the Master, that you ask no questions, then bhikkhus let friend communicate with it, with it to friend, yet still the bhikkhus were silent. And the Venerable Ananda spoke to the Blessed One, saying, Marvelous it is, O Lord, most wonderful it is, this faith I have in the community of bhikkhus, that not even one bhikkhu is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma, or the Sangha, the path or the practice. Out of faith, Ananda, you speak thus, but here Ananda Tathagata knows for certain that among this community of bhikkhus, there is not even one bhikkhu who is in doubt or perplexity as to the Buddha, the Dhamma or the Sangha, the path or the practice. For Ananda, among these 500 bhikkhus, even the lowest is a esteem interror, secure from downfall, assured and bound for enlightenment. And the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus, saying, Behold now, bhikkhus, I exhort you. All compounded things are subject to vanish, strive with earnestness. This was, uh, this was the last word of the Tathagata. How the Blessed One passed into Nibbana. And the Blessed One entered the first jhana. Rising from the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the fourth jhana. And rising out of the fourth jhana, he entered the sphere of infinite space. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite space, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite consciousness, he entered the sphere of nothingness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of nothingness, he entered the sphere of neither perception nor nor non-perception. And rising out of the attainment of the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he attained to the cessation of perception and feeling. And the Venerable Ananda spoke to the Venerable Anuruddha, saying, Venerable Anuruddha, the Blessed One has passed away. No friend Ananda, the Blessed One has not passed away. He has entered the state of the cessation of perception and feeling. 
Then the blessed one rising from the cessation of perception and feeling entered the sphere of neither, neither perception nor non-perception. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception, he entered the sphere of nothingness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of nothingness, he entered the sphere of infinite consciousness. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite consciousness, he entered the sphere of infinite space. Rising from the attainment of the sphere of infinite space, he entered the fourth jhana. Rising from the fourth jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the first jhana. Rising from the first jhana, he entered the second jhana. Rising from the second jhana, he entered the third jhana. Rising from the third jhana, he entered the fourth jhana. And rising from the fourth jhana, the blessed one immediately passed away. The world's echo. And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his parinibbana, there came a tremendous earthquake, dreadful and astounding, and the thunders rolled across the heavens. And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his parinibbana, Brahma Sahampati spoke this stanza: All must depart, all beings that have life must shed their compound forms, yea, even one, a master such as he, a peerless being, powerful in wisdom the enlightened one had has passed away and when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his parinibbana sakka king of the gods spoke this stanza transient things transient are the all compounded things subject to arise and finish having come into existence they pass away good is the peace when they forever cease And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his parinibbana, the venerable Anuruddha spoke this stanza. No movement of the breath, but with steadfast heart, free from desires and tranquil, so the sage comes to his end. By mortal pangs unshaken, his mind like a flame extinguished finds release. And when the blessed one had passed away simultaneously with his parinibbana, the venerable Ananda spoke this stanza. And <clears throat> there, then there was terror, and the hair stood up when he, the, the all accomplished one, the Buddha, passed away. Then, when the blessed one had passed away, some bhikkhus, not yet freed from passion, lifted up their arms and wept, and some, flinging themselves on the ground, rolled from side to side and wept, lamenting, Too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana, too soon has the happy one come to his parinibbana. Too soon has the eye of the world vanished from the from sight. But the bhikkhus who were freed from passion, mindful and clearly comprehending, reflected in this way: impermanent are all compounded things. How could this be otherwise? And the venerable Anuruddha addressed the bhikkhus, saying, "Enough, friends, do not grieve, do not lament. For has not the blessed one declared that with all that is dear and beloved, there must be change, separation, and severance of that which is born?" Come into being compounded and subject to decay. How can one say, May it not come to dissolution? The deities' friends are aggrieved. <coughs> but, Venerable Sir, of what deities in, is the Venerable Anuruddha aware? There are deities' friend Ananda in space and on the earth who are earthly minded. With disabled here they weep, with uplifted arms they weep, flinging themselves on the ground. They roll from side to side, lamenting, Too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana. Too soon has the happy one come to his parinibbana. Too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight. But those deities who are freed from passion, mindful and clearly comprehending, reflect, reflect in this way, Impermanent are all compounded things, how could this be otherwise? Now the Venerable Anuruddha and the Venerable Ananda spent the rest of the night in talking on the Dhamma. Then the Venerable Anuruddha spoke to the Venerable Ananda, saying, Go now, friend Ananda, to Kushinara and announce to the Mallas, the Blessed One, Bhasettaj has passed away. Do now as seems fitting to you.
so be it venerable sir and the venerable ananda prepared himself in the forenoon and taking ball and robe went to with a companion into kusinara at that time the mallas of kusinara had gathered in the council hall to consider that very matter and the venerable ananda approached then announced the blessed one vasettas has passed away do now as seems fitting to you and when they heard the venerable ananda speak these words the mallas with their sons their wives and the uh, wives of their sons were sorely grieved grieved at heart and afflicted and so with their hair all disheveled with arms of rage in despair wept flinging themselves on the ground they rolled from side to side lamenting too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana too soon has the happy one come to his parinibbana too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight homes to the remains <coughs> then the mallas of kusinara gave orders to their men saying gather now all the perfumes flower garlands and musicians even all that are in kusinara and the mallas with the perfumes the flower garlands and the musicians and with 500 sets of clothing went to the sala grove the recreation park of the mallas and approached the body of the blessed one and having approached they paid homage to the body of the blessed one with dance song music flower garlands and perfume and erecting canopies and pavilions they spent the day showing respect honor and veneration to the body of the blessed one and then the thought came to them now the day is too far spent for us to cremate the body of the blessed one tomorrow we will do it and for the second day and a third fourth fifth and sixth day they paid homage to the body of the blessed one with dance song music flower flower garlands and perfume and erecting canopies and pavilions they spent the day showing respect honor and veneration to the body of the blessed one but on the seventh day the thought came to them we have paid homage to the body of the blessed one with dance song music flower garlands and perfume and have shown respect honor and veneration let us now carry the body of the blessed one southward to the southern part of the town and beyond and let us there cremate the body of the blessed one south of the town in eight mallas of the foremost families bath from the crown of their heads in wearing new clothes with the thoughts we will lift up the body of the blessed one tried to do but they could not then the mallas spoke to the venerable anuruddha saying what is the cause venerable anuruddha what is the reason that eight mallas of the foremost family families bath from the crown of their heads in wearing new clothes with the thoughts we will lift up the body of the blessed one try to do but cannot you basettas have one purpose the deities have another then what venerable sir is the purpose of the deities your purpose basettas is this we have paid homage to the body of the blessed one with dance song music flower garlands and perfume and have shown respect honor and veneration let us now carry the body of the blessed one southward to the southern part of the town and beyond and let us there cremate the body of the blessed one south of the town for the purpose of the deities basettas is this we have paid homage to the body of the blessed one with heavenly dance song music flower garlands and perfume and have shown respect honor and veneration let us now carry the body of the blessed one northward to, a, to the northern part of the town and having carried it through the northern gate let us go through the center of the town and then eastward to the east of the town and having passed through the east gate let us carry it to the chetia of the mallas makuta bandhana and there let us cremate the body of the blessed one as the deity deity is wish venerable sir so let it be there upon the whole of kusinara even to the dust heaps and rubbish heaps became covered knee deep in mandaraba flowers and homage was paid to the body of the blessed one by the deity as well as the mallas of kusinara with dance song music flower garlands and perfume both divine and human respect honor and veneration were shown and they carried the body of the said one northward to the northern part of the town and having carried it through the northern gate they went through the center of the town and then eastward to the east of the town and having passed through the east gate they carried the body of the blessed one to the chetia of the mallad makuta bandhana and they are laid it down then the mallas of kusinara spoke to the venerable ananda saying how do you act venerable ananda respecting the body of the tathagata 
after the same manner Basset does as toward the body of a universal monarch. But how venerable Ananda do they act respecting the body of a universal monarch? The body of a universal monarch Basetta is first wrapped round with new linen and then with teas cotton wool. And again it is wrapped round with new linen and again with teas cotton wool. And so it is done up to 500 layers of linen and 500 of cot cotton wool. When that is done, the body of the universal monarch is placed in an iron oil vessel which is enclosed in another iron vessel and funeral pyre is built of all kinds of perfumed woods and so the body of the universal monarch is burned and at a crossroads a stupa is raised for the universal monarch so it is done by setas with uh, the body of a universal monarch And even Basetas, as with the body of a universal monarch, so should it be done with the body of the Tathagata, and at a crossroads, also a stopa should be raised for the Tathagata. And whoever shall bring to that place garlands or incense or sandalwood paste or pay reverence, and whose mind becomes calm there, it will be to his well-being and happiness for a long time. Then the Mallas gave order to their men, saying, Gather now all the teas, cotton, wool of the Mallas, and the Mallas of Kusinara wrap the body of the Blessed One round with new linen, and then with teased cotton wool. And again they wrapped it round with new linen, and again with teased cotton wool. And so it was done up to 500 layers of linen and 500 of cotton wool. When that was done, they placed the body of the Blessed One in an iron oil vessel, which includes in another iron vessel and they built a funeral pyre of all kinds of perfumed woods and upon it they laid the body of the blessed one now at that time the venerable mahakasapa was journeying from Pava to kusinara together with a large company of 500 bhikkhus and on the way the venerable mahakasapa went aside from the highway and sat down at the foot of a tree and a certain ajivaka came by and on his way to Pava and he had taken a mandaraba flower from kusinara and the Vendeval Mahakasapa saw the Ajibaka coming from a distance and as he drew close he spoke to him saying, Do you know, friend, anything of our master? Yes, friend, I know. It is now seven days since the ascetic Gotama passed away. From there I have brought this Mandaraba flower. Thereupon some bhikkhus not yet freed from passion lifted up their arms and wept and some flinging themselves on the ground rolled from side to side and wept lamenting too soon has the blessed one come to his parinibbana too soon has the happy one comes come to his parinibbana too soon has the eye of the world vanished from sight now at that time one subadda who had renounced only in his old age was seated in the assembly and he addressed the bhikkhus saying enough friends do not grieve do not lament we are well read of that great ascetic too long friends have we been oppressed by his saying this is fitting for you that that is not fitting for you now we shall be able to do as we wish and what we do not wish that we shall not do but the venerable mahakasapa addressed the bhikkhu saying enough friends do not grieve lament for uh, has not the blessed one declared that with all that is dear and beloved there must be change separation and severance of that which is born come to into being compounded and subject to decay how can one say may it not come to dissolution now at that time four mullahs of the former families bath from the crown of their heads and wearing new clothes with the thought will set alight the blessed one's pyre tried to do so, but they could not. And the Mallas spoke to the Venerable Anruddha, saying, What is the cause, Venerable Anruddha? What is the reason that these four Mallas of the foremost families bath from the crown of their heads and wearing new clothes with the thoughts we will set alight the Blessed One's fire, try to do, but try to do so, but cannot. You Basettas have one purpose, the deities have another. Then what Venerable Sir is the purpose of the deities? The purpose of the deities Vasettas is this, the Venerable Mahakasapa is on his way from Pava to Kusinara together with a large company of 500 bhikkhus. Let not the Blessed One's pyre be set alight until the Venerable Mahakasapa has paid homage at the feet of the Blessed One. As the deities wish, Venerable Sir, so let it be. 
And the Vendeval Mahakasapa approached the pyre of the Blessed One at the Chetia of the Mallaj Makuta Bandana in Kusinara and, and he arranged his upper robe on, the, on one soldier and with his clasped hands raised in salutation he walked three times round the pyre keeping his right side towards the Blessed One's body and he paid homage at the feet of the Blessed One and even so did the 500 Vikus. And when homage had been paid by the Vendable Mahakasapa and the 500 Vikus, the pyre of the Blessed One washed into flame by itself. And it came about that when the body of the Blessed One had been born, no ashes or particles were to be seen of what had been skin, tissue, flesh, sinews and fluid. Only bones remained. Just as when ghee or oil is born, it leaves no particles or ashes behind. Even so, when the body of the Blessed One had been born, no ashes or particles were to be seen of what had been skin, tissue, flesh, sinews, and fluid. Only bones remained, and of the 500 linen wrappings, only two were not consumed, the innermost and the outermost. And when the body of the Blessed One had been born, water rained down from heaven and extinguished the pyre of the Blessed One, and from the Sala trees, water came forth, and the Malla Usinara brought water scented with many kinds of perfumes, and they too extinguished the pyre of the Blessed One. And the Mallas of Kusinara laid the relics of the Blessed One in their council hall and surrounded them with the lattice walks, lattice walk of spears and encircled them with a fence of boughs. And there for seven days they paid homage to the relics of the Blessed One with dance, song, music, flower garlands and perfume and showed respect, honor and veneration to the relics of the Blessed One. Then the king of Magadha, Ajat Sattu, son of the Bidehi queen, came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away, and he sent a message to the Mallaj of Kusinara, says, saying, The Blessed One was of the warrior caste, and I am too. I am worthy to receive the portion of the relics of the Blessed One. I will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. honor. And Lichavij of Besali came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away. And, then, and they sent a message to the Mallaj of Kusinara saying, The Blessed One was of the warrior caste and we are too. We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. And the Sakyas of Kapilvattu came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away. And they sent a message to the Mallaj of Kusinara saying, The Blessed One was the greatest of our clan. We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will eat a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. And the bullies of Allah Kappa came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away. And they sent a message to the Mallas of Kusinara saying, The Blessed One of one uh, the Blessed One was one of the was of warrior caste and we are two. We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. And the Kolis of Ramagama came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away. And they sent a message to the Mallas of Kusinara saying, The Blessed One was of the warrior caste and we are two. We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. And the Vetha, Vetha Deepa Brahman came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away and he sent a message to the Mallas of Kusinara saying the Blessed One was of the warrior caste and I am a Brahman. I am worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. I will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. And the Mallas of the Pava And when the Mallas of Pava came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away and they sent a message to the Mallas of Kusinara saying, The Blessed One was of the warrior caste and we are too. We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. But when they heard these words, the Mallas of Kusinara addressed the assembly saying, 
The Blessed One has passed away in our township. We shall not part with any portion of the relics of the Blessed One. Then the Brahman Dona spoke to the Dona is Drona spoke to the assembly, saying, "One word from me, I beg you, sirs, to hear. Our Buddha taught us ever to forbear. Unseemly would it be to strive, arise, and war and bloodshed over the custody of his remains, who was the best of men." Let us all in friendliness agree to share eight portions, so that far and wide istupas may rise, and seeing them mankind faith in the all enlightened one will find. So be it, Brahman. Divide the relics into eight equal portions yourself. And the Brahman Dona said to the assembly, "So be it, sirs." And he divided justly into eight equal portions the relics of the Buddha. Blessed one, and having done so, he addressed the assembly, saying, "Let this on swords be given to me. Over this on, I will erect a stupa, and in its honor, honor, I will hold a festival." And the on was given to the Brahman Dona. Then the Moriyas of Pipali Vana came to know that at Kusinara the Blessed One had passed away, and they sent a message to the Mallas of Kusinara, saying, "The Blessed One was of the warrior caste, and we are too." We are worthy to receive a portion of the relics of the Blessed One. We will erect a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One and hold a festival in their honor. There is no portion of the relics of the Blessed One remaining. The relics of the Blessed One have been divided, but take care, but take from here the ashes. And they took from there the ashes. And the king of Magadha, Ajatu, son of the Vidhi queen, erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Rajgaha. And in their honor, held a festival. The Lichabis of Vesali erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Vesali, and in their honor, uh, held a festival. The Sakyas of Kapilvastu erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Kapilvastu, and in their honor, held a festival. The Bullies, Bullies of Allah Kappa erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Allah Kappa, and in their honor, held a festival. The colleges of Ramagama erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Ramagama, and in their honor held a festival. The Betha Deepa Brahman erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Betha Deepa, and in their honor held a festival. The Mallas of Pava erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Pava, and in their honor held a festival. The Mallas of Kusinara erected a stupa over the relics of the Blessed One at Kusinara, and in their honor held a festival. The Brahman Dona erected a stupa over the on, and in its honor held a festival. And the Moriyas of Pipali Vana erected a stupa over the ashes at uh, Pipali Vana, and in their honor held a festival. So it came about that there were eight stupas for the relics, a ninth for the on, and the tenth for the ashes. And thus it was in the days of old, eight persons. They are aware of the relics of him, the all-seeing one, the greatest of men. Seven in Jambudipa are honored, and one in Ramagama by kings of Nagares. One tooth is honored in the Tabasima heaven, one in the realm of Kalinga, and one by the Nagas kings. Naga kings, <coughs> through their brightness, this bountiful earth, with its most excellent gift, is endowed. For thus the relics of the all-seeing one are best honored by those who are worthy of honor by gods and nagas and lords of men. Yeah, by the highest of mankind, pay homage with claps hand for hard indeed it is through hundreds of hundreds of ages to meet with an all-enlightened one.